can make the wash not as effective. Not as effective, it says. This is one site. At removing dirt, oils, and odor from your body. That is describing getting clean. I'm sold. I got to admit. <laughs> I, I guess what's in I that will... fucking bag right there, baby? Bars of soap. Bars of soap. Bars of soap. And I'll beat you with them if you have a different opinion. <laughs> Are you ready? I have such a bad cavity. My like, back left tooth, my molar, I guess. But like, it actually, when I chew, I intentionally chew with that tooth because it feels like I'm scratching an itch. What, dude? <laughs> you see, so many things are just like not relatable. It feels so good. Mm. Like I can't even like put myself in your position and be like, what would that All feel right, like? All right, fine. I'll tell you what to do. Start eating a bunch of candy and fall asleep without brushing your teeth. Then you're gonna get a cavity. Chew on that side of your mouth. It feels good. I've never gotten a cavity, so it wouldn't. Ever? Mm -mm. What? It's not a big deal. All right. It's KFC Radio. Kevin's not here. He's hungover again. We don't have to talk to him. <laughs> got a problem. I mean, that guy, he's, he's got to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> it only started once Jackie got here. Um, so we are going to do basically a rundown. I, I have a list of things that we have to talk about. We have a list of things that we have to talk about. I guess. Well, we are, well, we already checked. Look at this. Look at us. We're cruising along on this rundown sheet. Kevin's out. He's hung over. Check. That one's done. <laughs> um, we did not mention on the episode last week, or last week, uh, on, on Tuesday's episode, how I was suckered into buying a 12 foot tall skeleton for $800. Can you go to Amazon and just search giant skeleton? 14 foot, please. <laughs> Like, you're the wealthiest on this panel right now, right? <laughs> yeah. If this is under four hundred dollars, will you buy us each one? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> it was probably, probably twenty. It was probably, was it fifteen feet? Fourteen feet. It was yeah. Well, I, I just saw twenty autofill. Let's go bigger. Well, maybe it was twenty. That's I don't want inflatable enormous. bullshit. On an eight foot one for three fifty. No, that was bigger than eight feet. It's oh. What's it twenty? Down. I mean, I would imagine a twenty is going to be around six hundred bucks. Seven forty nine. Johnny. 749, <laughs> boys. Boy. Johnny. We have to get it sent here, though. No, yeah. I want it in your apartment. Uh oh. My bad. <laughs> I want it in your apartment. No, I'm going to put it in my apartment. Come on. No. <laughs> it's just on my back door. <laughs> Like, I can fit it. Get I can it. fit get it. it. Get, get it. it. <laughs> Buy it now. No. I will come sure. over and help you assemble it. I'll chip in a hundred bucks. I'll throw a hundred. Yeah, right, we got it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Read the reviews. It's, first. it's, it's wait. I, I got, I'm just gonna get it at my prime. Um, you gotta make sure to, it arrives before Halloween. Oh no! You know, we'll put it up for Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seven forty. Not so bad. You, you get. You get. It was a what? It was what's it called? Home accents. Home. Twelve foot giant size skeleton. <laughs> you can put like a Santa hat on it. Is it prime? For the holidays? No, only two left in stock. Her. Oh, that one has lights that like fucking. Oh, it's creepy. It's I, is twelve feet that big? I don't know, fights. You could also just give me a nick. Is there like, a bigger? No, no, no. Is there a bigger one? Delivery October 27th, 28th. <laughs> Wait, let's see if there's bigger. <laughs> Uh, that's I don't 50's too big. I can't do 50. Wait, let's go I off of come Amazon. More than 12. I've been scrolling through. You can't find anything more than 12. Maybe that's the shipping limits. All right, I'm I'm gonna get it. Seven. If, if you if you come 700. over, 700s. If you come over and help me assemble it, that's you have to you, deal. 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 You coming? Yeah. yeah. Um. Do you have Do you have 12 foot ceilings in your? Apartment? I have a I have a back porch. Oh, You've been in my okay. apartment, haven't you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute, you but know. you do have pretty high ceilings. It might fit inside. I think. Like, might, might, we'll if check. you just have to, we'll check. Have to like, I bought it. We'll check. All right. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the The replies that have been seen where everybody else has gotten that skeleton for about two hundred dollars bro 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 so actually let's check what it's at right now i've been following the market it's a very volatile market the 12 foot tall <laughs> skeleton market <laughs> and like depends what time you log on to amazon i've seen it as low as like 460. that's why um <laughs> i i i have not seen any higher than what i got of that i really bought it at the peak um Okay, right now it's four hundred and five dollars. <laughs> currently, <laughs> currently it's four hundred and five dollars. Marked down from six ninety seven, which I don't think is. Whoa! Oh, I fucked up, dude. 
But if you order it now, it probably won't get there in time. No, it doesn't get to November 2nd or 7th. Got it. But had I seen this one. Can you return this after you build it? I would imagine no. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to. So you've ever been to my apartment. Nick, you have. Yeah. The like the the back porch. It's very easy to get to the building next door. Like 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 really just like I don't have to jump or anything crazy like that. You can just kind of swing your leg over the jump building to building. Something the, I can it's, do. Yeah, yeah. I'll call you if I need okay. you. <laughs> the, uh, okay. But you can just kind of swing your leg over the railing and you're on the roof of the next building. And that building is the bodega. And I'm just gonna put it. You can put it on, a, on I'm a bodega. Put, just put it on the bodega. Like over, is that like a legal <laughs> issue? Over, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I can't imagine they have security cameras out there. I'll wear a mask just in case. Um, <laughs> they're <laughs> absolutely like that, that's going to be the quickest. Like we we looked at the camera, you threw it over your balcony. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not going to put it there like trash. I'm going to put it there standing oh, yeah. up, overlooking the bodega. You should just get like a 50 percent off sign and just. <laughs> but what I said is I fucked up because there's a 12 foot giant inferno pumpkin skeleton with life eyes. What does that look like? I, I'm opening it up right now. Um, it looks it looks pretty fucking scary. That one will run you 800 bucks. Ooh, is that made out of noodles? Where like noodle like things? Sorry, what is this made out of? Tree trunks. Why? <laughs> this is confusing me. I don't know why. I'm sorry. This kind of broke my. Just ignore. Wait, you thought it was made it of noodles? It looks like it's made of noodles. Maybe <laughs> you think it's made of noodles? Cooked noodles. It is. Or tree trunk looking noodles. <laughs> Dude, I don't, even I don't know. know. I don't know. I, I, still, know I just what I you just, mean, bro. Okay. Um, but so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build that. It doesn't look like Donnie's gonna be able to make it. It is. It is here, gonna be here Friday at the latest, either Thursday or Friday, twenty seventh, twenty eighth with delivery dates. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build it on a live stream at my apartment. I fear that the live stream is going to be really quick. I think it's going to come in like five <laughs> pieces. I think it's going to come like a torso. You attach the legs to it. You attach the arms to it. You slap the head on it. You go. I mean, people have been tweeting me a lot of these fucking things. There can't be this many people in the world who are handy. Yeah, the, the, can, the ones where like houses have six of them set up, yeah. it seems. Which also, again, the amount of money that is going into these it fucking is, skeletons. It is a crazy amount of money. If you have more than one of these... You need to be taxed in the billionaire tax bracket. Yeah, absolutely. It is a complete, you have an <laughs> unnecessary amount of money if you have more than one of these fucking skeletons. Um, Maybe but you so, dress them up a little bit too. Oh, I'm going to dress them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, actually, I don't really have many 12 foot clothes, but I have a couple. <laughs> What's going to be his, his wardrobe? I don't know. I, I might just, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I'll just keep him here around and I'll always dress him for the theme of the yeah, holiday. Like 12 foot tall skeleton Santa. Uh huh. We, we do have a bizarre amount of skeleton merch here at Barstool. Do we? Yes. I, we, like I, every time there's like a championship, it's just oh, like oh yeah, is, it's is, like a bunch of skeletons on it. It's I don't like understand why. Kind of a Grateful Dead look, but then like all the quarterbacks are dead, but they won. I don't. It's it's not something I've fully grasped. I've I promoted it for the Rams because uh, we were Rams fans <laughs> for two right. weeks. Uh, yeah, the Rams had a ton of skeletons. It, I didn't. I was like, why is Matt Stafford dead? I don't. I don't understand it. It's it's every it's every every team wins a championship. It's a bunch of skeleton merch. I don't. Do like Pavs is getting TV. bodied by the Yo, TV right now. He like this is. But anyway, <laughs> there's also going to be a barstool party going on during it. So it's going to be a live stream outside barstool party inside. Um, I sent out a guest list, and uh, I was gonna I'm not say, going to say just clarify. Also, Nick had the audacity to ask me what I'm going to be serving for food at this party. You said you were going to be dressing up in possibly skeleton theme costumes. I sure will be. I didn't know if you'd be serving skeleton. Oh yeah, I'm going to bake a skeleton cake too. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's uh, Hello Fresh party? got? Yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone in this room is definitively invited to this party. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think anyone who's listening, is, is, but uh, there will be. Pe I'm gonna invite plenty of people. Not is there? Uh, wait, is this tomorrow? you or no? This is Friday. Fr yeah, yeah, that's right. Friday. All right, my brother's in town. I might <laughs> bring him through. Bring him on. Bring him on. The uh, yeah. So Friday we'll have a party. Friday night. For what I'm saying is Friday night. Set your clocks for a live stream. I think we'll do the live stream earlier in the evening, and then we can probably turn that off and focus on the party a little bit later. <laughs> um, but let's say, let's say. A seven o'clock time definitely could change because I haven't talked to the other person building the skeleton, which is Nick Tarani. Um, but let's say seven p.m. Friday night, the KFC Radio YouTube, there will be a live stream at some point around then. Okay, uh, just to clarify, sun goes down by six. What does that do then? Are we building it inside and then taking it outside? 
Maybe. I also have lights outside. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, something sometime around then, there will be a full-on skeleton uh, build. And, and everyone comes to the party. I want to say everyone who comes to the party has to be in skeleton theme. I think, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to totally say that. But some kind of Halloween theme. Don't fucking come like a lazy little dickhead, you know? <laughs> what are you going to wear? I'm going to wear skeleton stuff. Oh. I'm, I'm going to be... How are you going to wear skeleton stuff? How? With skeleton stuff. Like like the pretty standard like t-shirt. Not t-shirt, but the oh. long sleeve shirt and pants with the skeleton lazy on skeleton it. Lazy skeleton type of stuff. Lazy skeleton type yeah. stuff, yeah. Hopefully with a uh, glow-in-the-dark theme. That would be nice if it glows in the dark, but nice. we never know. Um, okay, check that. Uh, I guess since the Dave Portnoy show is uh, is... In uh, hiatus, there is a, a a vapid gap to be filled with barstool drama, and I have some. <laughs> it is juicy stuff. Tonight, Wednesday, as we record this, actually momentarily as we're recording this, probably in the next hour or so, there is a barstool sports Halloween party at the office <laughs> on the third floor. Costumes highly encouraged. The prize of this Halloween costume contest. No, it's actually not even the Halloween costume contest. It is just a fucking, um, it is just a raffle. So just you come, you get yeah. raffled in. Do you, do you know what the prize is? No. Do you know what the prize is? No one knows what this fucking prize is? I know what the prize is, and it's similar to a prize if we steal your content and post it everywhere. It is a fucking gift card to the Barstool Sports Store. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, I, got, I don't know who's on the party planning committee here, but you fucking can't be giving out gift cards to the Barstool <laughs> Store at Barstool parties. That's just, you can't have it. I could steal that just from upstairs. You could just yeah. steal it. Yeah. Just, listen to Jackie. She could just fucking no, I don't steal do, it. I don't do that. I wouldn't do that. I mean, like, don't do that. It is. I mean, that's we are one fucking step away from being like a corporate party where like you get you know, access to the vending machine for 30 seconds. As much as you can grab is what you win for having like a, the best costume. The Which, by the way, we're going up to this, and if somebody's dressed like a complete asshole, if there's somebody dressed as a baby, we're coming back down to recording. And there will be there will be no one. It's going to be all third floor people. I'd be shocked yeah. if there are content people up there. Maybe one or two people up there stealing some food. Um, I can't imagine that there are many content people like heading that way. But th th even more so than the party. The party, <laughs> the party in the office is a little. Uh, I mean, we, we've really crossed the line into overly corporate a while ago. Um, <laughs> the, but we had meetings today talking about how we can't swear anymore. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to listen to him. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, the, uh, the, the party in the office is bad enough. The party at the office yeah, is bad. But isn't that like an every year thing? That that's no, uh, yeah not not this this is like supposed to, we've never really done the in office happy hour for Halloween we do like the but again like that yeah. I'm actually okay with that I I draw the line the at the fifty dollar I don't actually I don't even know if it's fifty dollars it just says gift card <laughs> the the Barstool Sports gift card as the prize at the Barstool Sports party is is flat out unacceptable <laughs> you cannot have that that's crazy. Not my bar. Stool. Not my bar. Stool. I said. Everyone's a fucking <laughs> pussy about live streams, and the company has gives out gift cards to it. Like, like it's like here's fifty bucks. Give it back to us right now. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, there is, there's no prize. But in it that. is also like kind of wild that like we get like our discounts are like ten percent off. I don't like that we get here. So it's I, like like that is actually kind of something if you want barcel merch yeah that, that's a way to get it yeah. yeah or you could steal it like you do it is or you could steal it like that. just for the record i don't actually steal it or you could fucking buy it if you're listening uh i'm wearing the weird but fucking beautiful hat and i'm wearing the it's me hi i'm the problem it's me which is definitely going to be something i have to say to somebody about everything i'm saying right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely going to have to talk to someone about this <laughs> but whatever don't have shitty presents that i won't have to talk about on my fucking podcast or if there was still an inside barstool podcast i wouldn't have to talk about it at all however yeah i can't let it go unmentioned that we're giving out a barstool gift card at the barstool sports halloween party it's a crazy town it's it like the last time we gave out a gift card, it was a whole hullabaloo yeah. because the last we, time we gave out a gift card, lawyers were involved. Yeah, <laughs> that was. <laughs> we got to you a fifty dollars gift card to the parcel store is still the dumbest thing I've ever heard. 
It is. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm excited to see who's there. I'm excited to see who's jacked up for the fucking gift card. I think. Um, I think we should go grab some costumes from the corner and try to win this thing. I, I have a feeling that we're gonna lose. I'll just go steal a dozen shirt and I'll go as Frank the Tank. There you go. <laughs> Cause by the way, actually, now that this is out, there is a new lowering the bar today, where I am inside a box, <laughs> mm. and everyone is reaching their hands into the box. And they're trying to guess what it is, and and it's my living head, is in the box. Um, and were they like touching your face? Like did oh they yeah. poke your eyes? I was eyes biting them. Yeah, you um, definitely have hand foot mouth disease. Yeah, yeah probably. If, bro, if I have hand foot mouth disease, you just by said now, that he hasn't bought soap in two years. We're gonna get to years. that. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> 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 Hang on a it wasn't two years. It'll be ridiculous. You said you said hand soap in two years. Oh, hand soap. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hand soap's been since I moved into my apartment. Um. Whatever, bro. Fuck it. Hey, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, but the uh, – what was I just saying? Oh, oh, the, in, the, in the box. Everyone was so – I actually want a, a super cut of this if we can ask Colin for it. Like so accurately describing me without ever guessing me. It was – it was probably the most offensive thing I've ever taken part of in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. The way that you were describing it, it sounded like Vibs brought you on to do the lowering the bar roast of John Fuddleberg. It would, yeah, but like without knowing it was me. <laughs> it was people just cutting me down, like limb from limb. <laughs> fucking, like, what did Kate was, What did Kate say? Bro, so, all right. So, first it started with uh, Nick Tarani, who went, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. It was Donnie who was feeling my uh, face, and he goes, whoa. Big nose, and then, and then he said, "Kind of a mustache." <laughs> and, then, and then, and then he he feels like head and went, "Oh, that's a big head." Uh, Frank the Tank. And I was like, Dude, "Frank the Tank's fucking bald, bro." My I, I had my hair out, um, and then I forget who was saying what, but there was a, a spattering of um, who has low enough self confidence to let you put them in this box. Who has enough time to, let, to be in this box? <laughs> who <laughs> who, is, who sweats this much? Who who throws this much You heat? would come back like gross. Yeah. I mean, you're always kind of sweaty. But, like, <laughs> who, is, who throws this much heat? Um, a lot of lacking self-confidence was, was, was big in there. And then the most impressive one of all was Joey Camasta, who... Touched my head like this and went, oh, that's John Feidelberg. <laughs> like, I talk, I, I'm talking like a pat on the head. Oh, that's John Feidelberg. And like, I, I snapped. I was like, what? And he's like, I know exactly how long and soft your hair is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Joey's background in beauty, I think. Uh, Joey was the only one who got me. But it is very funny. Watch it. Um, I was grabbing people. I was squirting people. I was spitting on people. I was biting people. Do you think that they asked you because they knew that you would... Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, there's a reason everyone was like, the the second everyone saw me, they're like, ah, I should have guessed it was him. So how many people guessed it was you? One. Just Joey. Just Joey. Jesus. Yeah. There were other people who said Kate had all that with the self confidence and the <laughs> sweaty and the big head <laughs> and this and that. And then she said, is it John? And then she said John Rich, not yeah. John Feidelberg. Um, but the uh, everyone was like. Once they saw me, they're like, oh, of course. I, I sucked Ken Jack's finger at one point. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. Um, but had a lot of fun. Check that out. Lowering the bar. Is that the weirdest thing you've had to do on that show? Or where would you rank that? Oh, no, that was fun. They kept apologizing. I'm, I'm having a blast. They just kept feeding me candy inside there. So I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be sitting in the box eating candy, fucking with people. Like, you kidding me? Like, don't have to apologize to me. I'm having a fucking time of my life. I saw the box was like closed. Is was that just when people were walking just up? Just when they walked. Okay, I was gonna it say comes cool. Comes down when the when they start sticking their. Hands I was wondering also if there was just like a GoPro inside of it, and no, so it's just like inside. that wide shot of your head. Nothing inside. It is wild that you haven't gotten kidnapped. Like you didn't what? get kidnapped as a kid. Like just you, you were in a box, fed candy. You're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an adult like now. Like... As a kid, I would have more demands. <laughs> Where's a kiss? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give Johnny a kid. <laughs> Where's my sugar? Like, here's a milk that like not that kind. <laughs> um, okay, so today's episode is going to be brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is, if I may say, the balls. Okay, just like the Celtics, Game Time is the balls. Speaking of the Celtics, they're sick this year. Use Game Time to go see him. Speaking of hockey, wasn't speaking of hockey. Was speaking of Boston. <laughs> speaking of Boston, the Bruins are. Awesome this year, and Brad Marchand skating with the team already today. I don't think he was supposed to play until Thanksgiving. Um, 
They're all going to be teams worth going to see. You're going to want to use Game Time to do that because Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets, sports, concerts, and shows, and the guarantee the lowest price. If you haven't given Game Time a shot yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. You're going to love the app. I mean, everyone at Barstool is constantly talking about it. Rome was just at the NLCS on it. Um, I think there are other people at the NLCS on it. I'm sure there will be other players at the other fans at the World Series using it. Again, as I mentioned, uh, the Boston Celtics and the Boston Bruins are both going to be playing for championships this year, so go see them before that happens. Um, and you can do that by downloading the Game Time app, go to the account tab to create a login, and redeem code KFC for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Uh, download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Again, download the app. All you do is go to the tab, to, uh, the, go to the account tab to create a login, redeem code KFC, twenty bucks off a ticket. Not a bad deal. Go to game time again. Thank you very much. I don't know why I said thank you. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I guess now we are going to do... We're going to do... Um, I guess we'll start with the Dirty Man since you already fucking ratted me out on that one. If you guys haven't known, R.I.P. What's my Dirty Dude's name? Ooh, he's, he's, not, he's Iranian. I know that. Oh. Um, dirtiest Man Alive. 94 years old. Just passed away. Big stoolie. Um, <laughs> Long time stool. Yeah, man. Little chaps there. For yeah. You. Um, the what's what's his name? Baz. Amu Amu Haji. Amu Haji. Uh, R.I.P. Amu Haji has died. Uh, he was a very very dirty man. And what I feel <laughs> sounds like weirdly kinky when you say he's it. a dirty boy. <laughs> <laughs> what I feel that I, I was hoodwinked. Um, so I I got tweeted this a lot yesterday. A lot of people. Is <laughs> also a dirty man? Uh, he, yeah, yeah. I, I imagine that's why they were tweeting. Okay, okay, yeah. um, I, I saw yours and Kevin's exchange where he's like, "I had one typed out, but thought this is far too like, mean." A jarring amount of people added me, which I think not, it's not a crazy <laughs> amount, but a jarring. I amount. think it's meaner to admit that you thought it was too mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it is. It's like, ah, no, this is too direct. It's, Wait, it's, so sorry. Was uh, this man? Uh, was this man like going for? Like, why didn't he just wash himself? Was well, he going for see, dirtiest? I'm glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. that's what the headlines all left out of their fucking news yesterday. It was a big story yesterday. Everyone left it out. Everyone was, oh, the dirtiest man alive died. Dirty man alive, dirtiest man alive died. You know what he did recently? He Washed fucking him. showered. Well, then then the dirtiest man alive did not just die. <laughs> he's not a good point by you as well. <laughs> I, I, my, my argument is that's what killed him. Is oh. He was doing great until he fucking cleansed himself. And now he's dead. It's like when you clean like fish's tanks, and then they die. Is that is that true? It's a thing, I think. Really? It really happened to my fish, so I thought it was a thing. But I actually <laughs> oh, there it is. Am I sorry? <laughs> <laughs> the um, the yeah. Well, well, but my point is with all this is I was I was very offended that I got all those tweets yesterday. I was I was a little upset <laughs> that a lot of people were like fights. You're you're next in line for the throne. You're on deck, baby. <laughs> um, and then today before the show, I stopped in Dwayne Reed, and I got soap for the first time in probably a month and a half, two months. So my question to everybody in the room is how long have you gone without using soap? Like body soap? Body soap. I've definitely gone like probably a three-week period three -week where period, just okay. keep forgetting. Yeah. Colleen? What, not more than a day. Yeah. <laughs> not more than a day? A single day yeah. in your whole life is it since you've been in control of your cleanliness. Yes. Maybe if I like don't shower, if I like miss a shower or something. Well, that would be that would be longer than. Okay, a day, so though, it's like, it? but that's like that's like under like weird like when I got my nose job, like I didn't shower for like three days or okay. something like that. So three days. So a I year. couldn't soap my soap put soap soap. Sorry. What? Yeah, no. You're sorry, I'm feeling really <laughs> awkward today <laughs> because uh, I couldn't wash myself with soap. Yeah. Then. I don't think I've ever like no. Never. No, I mean, I so hand. yeah. You what? Like I have it on hand at all times. You have soap on hand, like right right now? Well, no. Oh. She's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> The the I I I don't Wait, think it's Pabs, that weird. What about you? You know, the, I've gone a long time. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there was a point in college where like nobody wanted to buy the next bottle, so it was just like a standoff. Yeah. <laughs> and then somebody had a date, and they just had to give in. <laughs> Bro, I went through. I went through that. I had that standoff with myself where I was like, I had a fucking. So I probably haven't had. I'm a bar soap guy. I'm team fucking bar soap. If you're team body wash, that means your team. I like to be dirty. Yeah, the body wash doesn't What's do your fucking. Logic there. Body wash doesn't do shit to you. 
What's your logic there? My logic is body wash is just like you're rubbing a lotion on yourself. You're not fucking getting clean. If, if anyone who's a body wash person is shaming me about being dirty, get the fuck out of here. You're a disgusting human being. Wait, but you didn't you didn't have any kind of argument. You just said that, like it's like, like it's when you when you're using a bar of soap, you're fucking you're, you're getting a layer of skin off. You're getting that dirty layer of skin off. No, it's just the same thing. It's just like a thicker. No, I would no. say it, it even. No, I'm passionate you, about this topic. Okay, I, I think well, I, I think body think wash is bullshit. Wrong. I think body wash is just fake. It's not real. <laughs> like like when when you're fucking sudsing up in the, with your hair and the sh- and the shampoo, like you're like okay, this is doing something here. You just rub body lotion on you and then it just washes off. No, it suds it up. It doesn't it suds up, but it doesn't but, get the layer of fucking exactly dry, dry dirty dr- skin off. Wait, are you using like a rag though? Because that's I think kind of what you got to do to get it to suds. Yeah, I'm not using a rag. Oh, well, yeah. you're not using well, a rag. But, but how is you using a loofah? Get the fuck out of here! You're not a loofah person. I I, I yeah, don't try and lie. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> I'm just like there's just not like I have sensitive skin, so loofahs just make me like break out in hives. Yeah, okay, so you so you have sensitive skin that you don't clean because you just web. No, rub because I but guys, it's all clean when I use the the liquid soap no it's not yes it is it's because, not because like the bar what liquid is the bar soap, of soap does barf, not clean you that's a goddamn motherfucking the bar of soap doesn't have any kind of like exfoliating factors yes it, it does no it doesn't the kind i buy does it's slippery no 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 it's the like you drop the soap has, but it's like because it's slippery oh well, we're getting homophobic now fantastic <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, like, it's like it's like you know it's like don't drop the soap because like it's easy to drop the soap because it's slippery because what because a guy will fuck you no that's <laughs> nothing to do with homophobia that's exactly what don't drop yeah. the soap means i know but i'm saying but i wasn't saying it in like a homophobic restaurant i'm saying in a soap is slippery reference <laughs> <laughs> the the idea that you think so you so you just like you think Body wash cleans you equally, or the sa- or or do you think it cleans you better? Well, I guess if I'm taking a stance, I think it cleans you better. Yeah, right. <laughs> Give me a Google. Let's check the science on There's this. There's not going to be any kind of scientific oh, experiments oh, on I this. Oh, I beg to differ. There will be science on this, and that's a goddamn motherfucking fact. I think there will be. Okay, what? wait, 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 wait. Riddle me this before we look oh, up boy, anything. I hope Riddle I'm right me this. On this one. Okay, so bars of soap were the OG soap. Yep. Way forms right. Yeah. So then why... By the way, sorry to interrupt. I have a mosquito in my apartment who is just <laughs> running my <laughs> show. You dude. know why? Because you're dirty. No, and that's not why. It's because I have fucking juicy-ass blood. <laughs> um, it is, dude. It's fucking like every night he's just fucking... I can hear him buzzing my tower and he just fucking gets in, gets out. I can never catch him, but I am... I, I was looking in the shower. I looked in the mirror after the ride of the shower today. First of all, I am. I have put on some weight. Second of all... <laughs> I am covered in bug bites, like everywhere. He's just running my show. Oh my god! <laughs> Could uh, also be the fact that you're like sweating through your sheets from not having air conditioning for like yeah. months. The mosquito might be the least of your problems. No, it's not. <laughs> it's my number one problem right now. <laughs> not having soap was number two. I rectified that one today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's your argument here? Um, Don't look at that yet. Don't look at that yet. My argument. What? Oh, okay. So it starts with bars of soap, and then they have to make. The science community says, well, this isn't working. We have to come out with Oh, you think that's what it was? You think the science community decided that's what it was? I think that's Or do you think it was maybe capitalism and they were like, consumers seem to like this more? Hmm. Do you think scientists? Got me there a little bit. No, no, no. I do think the scientists scientists were like, excuse me. No, they got this Procter and Gamble. Yeah, I got to talk to the Dove company. Um, (laughs) Seems like that that soap you're using isn't cleaning. Well, they just said our people are dirty. We need something that's gonna be stronger. And they said liquid soap is the next. Is the thing so it's like if you can't, there's if there's an OG and then something better that means that there was a problem with the first one. That's 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 incorrect. So there's a problem with the, oh, wait, with the, what do we got here. What do we got here. What's what's the result? Uh, the, so basically, it's better. The body wash is better for hydration. Okay. But it can irritate your skin, and it's not as fe- as effective at removing dirt, oils, or odor from your body. You just described getting clean. You just described that it is not as effective at getting clean. This is one search. <laughs> yeah, all we need is one. All we need, don't look any further than this. <laughs> it says it says the gentle gentle nature, not getting the layer of, of dead skin off like I mentioned. Yes. The gentle nature of liquid body washes. Oh, I, I fucked that up. Liquid body <laughs> washes. The gentle nature of liquid body washes may boost hydration in your skin. Fantastic. You look very liquidy. Whatever. Uh, what? You got hydrated skin is what I'm saying. <laughs> but... Can make the wash not as effective, not as effective, it says. This is one site. At removing dirt, oils, and odor from your body. That is describing getting clean. I'm sold. I gotta admit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I guess what's in that I fucking was... bag right there, baby? 
Bars of soap. Bars of soap. Bars of soap. And I'll beat you with them if you have a different opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that this would be the perfect opportunity for my website? <laughs> I knew this was coming. My website that Are I want to create, that I have the the fake news website. Where yeah, you that's uh, we. Are you describing Snopes? No, no. Snopes she wants Snopes. to make a website that when you go to it, it looks like Google, but it gives the results that you want. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, smart, right? Very smart. Yeah, but I when, came up with another invention too. Well. well <laughs> I was going to say, when you first pitched that to us, you did not realize you were just making fake news. <laughs> but it's a, it, I mean, it's catch your phrase. Just run with that one. But, but, but it, it exactly like, so we don't know the paths like went to this, like you could have gone to the site and just said, like, so then you type in how you want to phrase it, like, is bars of soap cleanlier than body wash? And then you get the results, whatever. Um, but do you want to hear my next sure. idea? Yeah. Jelly pillow. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just a pillow full of jelly. <laughs> and I, I, I'll be honest, I put that together. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just, to put my pat myself on the back there, but there's yeah, not, I and it would be out. like you wouldn't be like Smuckers, so it would be like something like odorless and whatever. But I just it would just be a comfortable pillow full of jelly. Yo, you so think? you're basically you're inventing like kind of water beds in a sense. No, like a thicker water. It's a jelly bed. pillow. Like a like a thick water bed, thick water. Bed. I guess, but it's. Okay, so it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but these, no, these aren't full no, these of... Aren't, yeah, you these mean are, like full of I want, smuckers. I want, I want full of, full of jelly. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, I'll fuck with that. I can get down with that. Okay. I, guess. I mean, I'll give it a try. I am I like more... I will make some prototypes. I like a firmer mattress, but a softer pillow. Um, Jackie, I, I, I actually... I might be a preserves guy in a pillow. I want you to... Jelly. jelly that's that's going to be like a nugget. I, I, I like a preserve. I like maybe a couple seeds in there, harden it up. I'm a preserves guy through and through in every sense of my life. So why not continue that to the pillow? Okay. All right. I'll I'll you, I I'll want you. Jam pillow. I want you. You guys to, want jelly pillows? I want you to actually make a prototype for the vlog. Yeah. Okay. I will. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm a great need, idea. But you, you can expense the jelly. Okay. 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 Next topic. Right. We got the dirty thing out. We are. I mean, we are. I've convinced everyone about we're all done with body lotions here. You sold me. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm getting a bar of soap. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, now, uh, a former fan of uh, – someone I'm a former fan of, pretty hot in the news this week, um, Kanye West, been dropped by Adidas due to anti-Semitic remarks. Jackie, your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that it's good for Adidas to drop him. You think so? I think that Kanye West is I don't know what he's on, but he's he's gotta He's off his Lexapro because you've never seen something as crazy as Kanye off his Lexapro. I believe he uses the N word in that line, but um, <laughs> no. I'm gonna say Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that he really, really dropped the bag on this one and I don't see how he's gonna make any kind of money in the future. Yeah, I, I, I think it's gonna be pretty tough for Kanye to come back from this. My sister, even I don't know why she's like she's like so in on cancel culture for some reason. Oh, the field saying this is cancel culture are the dumbest people alive, and also this is what cancel culture has always been. It's always been capitalism, people making the right decision, not making the right decision, but making a decision that they feel is best for yeah. their bottom line. Yeah. that's what cancel culture has always been. Yeah, people say that this is cancel culture. It's like that's, it, no. but like, but every person who's ever been canceled, it was yeah. just because a business decided that that's bad for their bottom line and they're going to be done with it. Yeah. Are they? Are that's, they trying? That's exactly to, what's happening here. It's not. Can, I'm. I'm not saying Kanye got canceled. I'm saying cancel culture has always been this. Yeah. Are Are they trying to say because people were like tweeting at Adidas, like you have to drop Kanye? That that's why Adidas did it. That's not why Adidas. Like Adidas realized. I'm sure, it like, played a part of it. Yeah. yeah. That, if you're gonna have that against your brand, like. Wait. So was Adidas the one that lost? 120 or how? No. Uh, I think they lose like 250. They're gonna lose 250 this quarter or something like that. 246. And then yeah. he's like, I think his wealth got cut in half. Like he's worth around four hundred million now. So if he doesn't make another penny, he's fine. But yeah, then like, I mean, Aaron Donald and uh, and da uh, and, and Jalen Brown left Donda, the Donda fucking high school girls scene. Which, by the way, the Donda. If you've ever seen the video, mm -hmm. like the clip of like the right. kids all singing "Good Morning." At Donda Academy, it's a goddamn motherfucking cult. Like, I everyone I, should get the fuck out of there. I think I, I think I tweeted like, isn't what this what the CIA like assassinates people for to protect the greater good? Yeah, because like, yeah. this is about to get out of hand. Dude, it is, it is. Uh, the the Donda, the, I guess the, the girls' basketball team got uninvited from tournaments, all kinds of shit. 
Antonio um, Brown said he's he's riding with him. Well, Antonio Brown is the president of Don Academy, which I don't think anyone knew <laughs> until <laughs> not Don Academy of Don the Sports. Maybe Don the Academy. Check that. Check his check his statement. I think Don the Sports. Um, but no, I don't think anyone fucking knew that until he tweeted out, "I'm not quitting." Everyone's like, "You have a job? What are you talking about?" He's uh, the president of Don the Sports. Don the Sports. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Kanye and uh, and AB. Yeah, if you if you're finding yourself aligned with those two guys right now, <laughs> it's I, it's not the place to be. One guy who's just mercilessly tweeting at Kanye, uh, Tom Brady wants to fuck his wife, um, and then yeah. the other guy who is just really anti-Semitic. <laughs> They've I, teamed up; they're well, on the same squad. So if you're looking, if you're a person who's out of their goddamn fucking minds and looking for a, a place to hang, might I suggest wherever Kanye and AB are. However, now that we got the serious stuff out of the way. There's been a lot of rumors swirling about other corporations that have not so great ties. Mm. Okay. A lot of people, which really sucks for them. Like, I, I was trying to think of, like, like when you were a kid and, like, maybe you got a C on your report card and you're like, ah, they're gonna, my parents are going to be pretty pissed, but, like, I'll get over this. But then, like, your brother really got in trouble and like, now they're going to be mad and this is just going to make them more mad. Like, <laughs> I would have gotten away with this if like, like if you had to go and get arrested and now they're pissed about my C too. Like it was, I would have been fine with just a C. I would have, I would have talked my way out of this one, <laughs> but like now they're furious and they're on a fucking yeah. warpath. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of companies catching strays um, on Twitter and the internet right now. Cause people like, they said, uh, excuse me, Nazism speaking of, and then they're listing things such as Hugo Boss, Mercedes, <laughs> Volkswagen, um, Kodak, Coca Cola. I didn't know Kodak IBM. was involved. Yeah. IBM. Um, Wait, how, hold, hold on. Basically, no, before you say hold on, what I'm going to say is do you know what brands used to be Nazis? All the oh, best man. ones. <laughs> All the good ones. <laughs> like, I disagree with them, but this is just a fact. If you're a high-end brand right now, you are a Nazi. <laughs> like, like the only the only fucking companies that weren't into Nazism are like white trash companies. <laughs> like fucking Pepsi stayed true to the American dream. And now every restaurant's like, is Pepsi okay? <laughs> like, like you're fucked now. Fucking Lil Debbie. Fucking Pepsi and Spam are the ones who are like, we're not going to do anything with Nazis. But <laughs> everyone else, everyone else it seems like worked with not. Doc Martens was getting thrown out there. There are Doc Martens. What did I say? Yeah, I said Doc Martens. Mm -hmm. Give me, Pat, give Wait, me as big a list as you can. Fucking Fanta. Of the <laughs> Yo, Fanta was like invented by the Nazis. It was. Dude, it is like, oh my God. Dude, yeah, no, they Wait, were like. So are these just companies with like Nazi collabs? They, like, oh, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's a weird There's, way to phrase yeah, it. Doc Martin's ex Nazism. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dark skit out there of uh, Don't You Want to, Fanta? Like when that got created. <laughs> Bro, they, oh yeah, BMW, Ford. <laughs> Ford? Ford? Ford betrayed the American dream, those <laughs> sons of bitches. What'd they do? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, if you didn't work with the Nazis, there's a ceiling on how classy your brand can get. <laughs> it is. The elite brands, the supreme brands worked with Nazis. <laughs> I don't know if I can say any of this. I'm kidding. I'm very much kidding. Sad boy has dropped John Feinberg. <laughs> I'm stepping up. <laughs> Safba Industries would like to make right, a statement. Top 10 American brands that aided Nazis. 10, Coca-Cola. Nine. Wait, go back up. Is that a Nazi symbol in... Coca-Cola? Yeah, it has a swastika <laughs> with Coca-Cola written on it. Jesus. <laughs> That's a tough look for Coca-Cola. <laughs> that is. MGM. Yeah, dude, by the way, I'm, I'm not even cents. making jokes. I'm just listing facts. High-end brands worked with Nazis. Chase you, Manhattan. MGM. MGM. M oh, MGM probably made Nazi propaganda, right? <laughs> See what they did. Hold on. Go, uh, yeah, wait. Go up to that because that's the great dictator, which is like mocking Nazis. Okay, hey, I'm Pat, zoom in a little bit. I'll read it. Mm -hmm. Prior to World War II, Germany had one, had been one of America's most important film markets, as implied in the above entry. Germans had a bit of an obsession with the heavily romanticized version of America. And as such, American film stu studios were willing to bend over backwards to appease the German government. Even Warner Brothers, who developed a reputation for being the most anti-Nazi of the major studios at the time, ordered that the word Jew be taken out of their movies and invited Nazi dignitaries to visit their studio. Yikes. 
<laughs> but the single greatest act of Nazi support was one done by MGM after the invasion of Poland in 1939. They donated prints of 11 of their films to the German relief effort. The German relief effort? That's after the war with Poland began. These bewildering dreams of maintaining a market in Germany only died off after France and Britain's markets threatened to die out too in response to all this collusion with their enemy. So they saw a crystal knock, then were like, they are probably tired. They smash up a lot of shit. Go send them some movies. Good. That's crazy. <laughs> that is nuts. All right. All right. Let's check out there. What, what, what Chase Manhattan do? Chase Manhattan. The Chase Manhattan's bank form of colluding with the Reich was particularly heinous. Chase Bank, folks. This is so oh, fucked. God. This is what I mean. I, I apologize to all the Nazi uh, sympathizing brands that we're outing here. But you guys are high end, so that's good. I'm going to get my account keep going closed. High end brands, and you keep like doing God. like a hail. <laughs> 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 the Chase Manhattan Bank form of colluding with the Reich was particularly heinous because Carlos Niederman, Chase's representative in Paris, had very good personal relations with the Nazis. He agreed to their request that the bank seize the assets of at least 100 Parisian Jews that were considered especially worth pursuing by the Reich. Yikes! This doubtless, this doubtless Lee, I imagine, this doubtlessly helped the Gestapo capture those people. Chase Manhattan was hardly alone in this, though. In 1998, the company was part of a suit demanding reparations from J.P. Morgan and Citibank for the millions of dollars stolen. In the end, the payouts were $200 a month. Yikes. The survivors and descendants had to fight not only that large amounts of their payments, had to fight to not have large amounts of the payments eaten up by the wire transfer fees. So even then, they were in '98. They was trying to be motherfuckers about it. Jesus, let's see what else we got. <laughs> Number seven, Dow Chemical. I can't, well, can't say I'm too surprised at chemical companies. <laughs> a bunch of motherfuckers. Um, I have a question. Yeah, ask away, Jack. Do you think that like hail the word hail like when you hail a taxi, right? Yeah. Is that <laughs> What came first, the chicken or the egg type of thing? Well, Heil, Heil is, is, is Heil. Is, 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 I get that it's Heil, okay. and I get that it's German and everything. Yeah. But like, I actually don't know what the definition of Heil is. But um, is that, did that come, like, like was that specifically a Nazi thing? And then we just said, like, you hail It means hailed salvation. Tax. It means salvation, mm -hmm. so save save Hitler, God, yeah. like God save the queen. Maybe it's relations between man and his God. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. No. God save God save Hitler. Jesus Christ, don't cut that out. So then when we say, when we say hail a taxi, yeah. when we say hail a taxi. You're saying God save a taxi. God save a taxi. No, no, no. No, 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 no. But I'm saying, but I'm saying like, is that, are we referencing? No, no. I, I, I don't, Do honestly, I don't know. I'm going to say no, but why hailing a cab is problematic and associated with Nazism. Jack dog. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we are fucking. This episode is all over the place, <laughs> yeah. and I love it. We're, <laughs> dude, we, dude the, the promo of this episode is we get deep into Nazi times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ke Kevin's gonna wake up to that headline, and be like, "What the what fuck the happened?" Fuck, dude. I wish I was there. I can't be hung over again. <laughs> um, so yeah, I can't really read that one, Pat. Why don't you let me know on that? <clears throat> Alt-right users on 4chan have sent out messages to their followers to hail cabs all across the world to signify their allegiance with Adolf Hitler and Nazism. Oh, well, that's different. Yeah, but this report right here is basically telling people to not associate yourself with Nazi fascists. Good, good, good advice. <laughs> is this, good advice. You know, I, I, I don't think this is 4chan. I think people that run Uber got onto 4chan and were like, all right, we're going we're gonna to make it so if you get a cab, you're a Nazi, and then we're going to be the good ones. They, uh, they gave a saying. list of tips, though, on how uh, not to be associated with Nazi Germany. First, oh. stop hailing taxis. Okay. <laughs> Second, <laughs> stop doing the okay hand gesture, fam famously known as a circle. That game. was ridiculous when they convinced the whole yeah. world. I was like, it just means okay. Third, stop memeing Pepe the Frog. And what? Pepe, Pepe, the frog. When, Pepe the Frog. When did he? When did Pepe the Frog get turned into a Nazi? Pepe? Oh, oh, Pepe was one of the first to go. Was he? Yep. Because I still see him a lot. I've pro I'm glad I know that because I've definitely almost fired one of those off. Oh, hello, oh, Pepe the Frog. Yeah. All right. I'll be honest. the The origin of hail is Germanic. There I is. am. I mean, there's no way. But there's no way... Okay, one more Google on this, Paz, and then we'll get back to uh, <laughs> companies that are Nazis. Um, when, did it, when did the phrase hail a cab get invented? Like, it was pre-40s. All right, here's what the deal. I'm, I'm going to give you... 
I'm going to give you a solid maybe on this. Okay. Okay, that, I'll take that. That is a... I, I don't know. I, it sounded it sounded kind of silly at first. Um, but when you're hailing something, there's no way. Like, after the war, the same... we were like, we should use this to get fucking... We were like, all right, we'll take all the Nazi doctors, and we'll take all the Nazi scientists, we'll get to the moon real fast. And also... <laughs> yeah. What if we use that Hitler <laughs> greeting to get cabs? <laughs> just like, we'll repurpose it now that it's gone. That is... What I would imagine happened was, this is still equally fucked up, is like when you when you have to get a cab, you like put your arm out, yeah. and then people are like, oh, that's kind of funny. It looks like the Hitler. Like the, Are I, people saying that? I don't know. That's, that's what I would guess. <laughs> no, they were like hailing a cab, and I was like, that's kind of fucked up. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know either. I'm giving you I'm giving you a solid uh, maybe. maybe. I don't know. I don't even know when taxis got popular in the States. I yeah. feel like it was before the forties. Um but I can't I can't tell you definitively. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I mean, gonna, I'll do more research and I'll get back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you the can first dr- taxi accident was in eighteen ninety nine, so that was before that. Okay, so eighteen but but did the phrase hail a cab exist then? I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna My to, homework is jelly pillow. Jelly pillow hail a figure out hail a taxi. <laughs> fill out hail, hail taxi. All right, Paz, what are the other, what are our top five uh, Nazi companies? I know one was IBM. But they didn't yeah, I, IBM IBM made some kind of technological chip for the SS. I know that. When when you originally said IBM, I didn't realize they were such an old company. So I was like, I was like, were they doing this shit recently? What's no, going no. on? Like, we got up to a seven, which is Dow seven's Chemical. Dow Chemical. Which yeah. again, I can't say I'm surprised. Yeah. Brown Brothers, I don't know who this is. Brown Brothers Harmon? Mm, BBH. BBH. Is that is that a Bush right there? Is that George H. W. right that there? That is Bush Family Fortune, yeah. Okay, that'll that'll do it. Yeah. Um They ran a business. Don't really know what they did here. Okay. So so them. Woolworth. Their Woolworth was entire a entire inventory came from Germany. The, the, the entire store. Okay. <laughs> what, what did Woolworth do? They sold everything the Nazis. They 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 sold things so the Nazis could make money. Is basically what they they funded the Nazi regime. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Then we got Alcoa. I don't know what that is. Uh, aluminum producer. Aluminum. Yeah. Aluminium is how it's pronounced. Actually. <laughs> That's how the British say it. They invented the, the language. <laughs> you so. went to British like Britain what, or England. But everyone like just kept once. saying aluminium. It is. It is. Uh, I'm kidding. I've heard John Oliver say it. I didn't know <laughs> one single person say aluminium. <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, I, that sounds like a Rudy word. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's this one? This is uh, Ford. And they were supplying 1,200 Russian slaves to Ford factories. What, dude? So they had they had Russian Jewish slaves, I imagine, working yeah. on that board. In 1998, it Yikes. came out that the Third Reich, Reich was providing Reich. For, Ford's factory uh, in Cologne with 1,200 Russian slaves. Oof. As a form of compensation, mm-hmm. compensation for what? By the way, on the on the cover of this, uh, I looks like maybe the Ford's like worker paper, the Ford's I don't know, whatever you call that. Um, the headline is The International Jew, Colin, The World's Problem. Did you just say Colin? You just said, I said right. I said Colin. I meant Colin. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The <laughs> International Jew, you, Colin? You the said you problem. said Colin, and then I still can't get, get over right. Right. Yeah, 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 right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so um, Henry Ford was on the committee, was a committee member on the America First Association, which advocated America to stay out of World War II. Yeah, America First was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty heavily full of Nazis. America, America First was like the rallying cry of Nazis in America. And last but not least, IBM. In 1933, uh, international business machines began providing German with, with punch card machines that functioned as precursors to modern computers and databases. Documents have since been uncovered that show that as late as 1941, IBM was working in tandem with the Reich to liquidate Jews from Holland. Liquidate is a fucked up word. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I get that that was their goal, yeah. but liquidate just sounded like, oof, Jesus yeah, Christ. These I've been... Here. IBM employees, tra- I, IBM employees were training SS personnel how to use their machines to record the movement, sorting, and mass execution of large numbers of unde- undesirable, liquidate and undesirables are yeah, two words like I that. wouldn't have used in this fucking <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, in this article times, written in 2020. Right in, at times, right in the headquarters of death camps. These machines, however, remained IBM property at all times. 
In 2002, IBM was, was sued by five gypsies to collect. Like, man, the gypsies really caught a raw deal. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think Sam Real has a joke where he's like, he's like, yeah, there were other people involved in the Holocaust, yeah. but like, if you were someone who wasn't Jewish, aren't you like, is there someone I could talk to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think there's been a misunderstanding. <laughs> um, IBM was sued by five gypsies to collect reparations because their parents had been killed during the Holocaust. After four years of legal discussion, the case was dismissed due to the statute of limitations. Ooh, let the Holocaust Yo. fucking motherfuckers off on a statute of limitations is scumbag shit. You scumbag can, shit. You cannot drop a statute of limitations on Dude, the Holocaust. Like, that actually, is. guys, it was 50 years and... You're about 30 late, it seems. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyway, tough day to be all those companies. Those companies were, like, really working with Nazis. I didn't realize that they were, like, I thought it was kind of, like, here and there. You thought they accidentally me. made some clothing for them. <laughs> not not just, like, took on their slaves. Yeah. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah. That was pretty bad. Yeah, there's a lot of companies who are like, Kanye, I wish you'd shut the fuck up yeah. so everyone doesn't <laughs> think about all the companies. <laughs> um... The getting a C reference is a good reference. What's that? So the getting a C and then your brother or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been fine. <laughs> um, okay, and then last but not least, I guess we will do... Uh, can you pull this story up for us, Pabs? Um, a man was rejected from a job because his penis is so big, they thought he had an erection during the interview. It's via the New York Post. <laughs> um, first of all, bro, congrats. <laughs> I mean, kind of fucking sick. To be like, yeah, I didn't get the job. What happened? Big cock. <laughs> um, they couldn't take on his extraordinary qualifications. A man with a nine and a half inch penis, I don't think is big enough. To so not... Maybe it's like the thick. <laughs> Jackie's like, oh, he's girthy. <laughs> um, the, uh, so a man with an, an impressive nine and a half inch penis. That's a big penis. That's not you get fired from your job big. Yeah. Or you don't even get the job big. You got to start asking what kind of pants was he wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have been asking for it. <laughs> um, a man with an impressive nine and a half inch penis has alleged he was rejected from a job because he thought because they thought he had an erection the whole interview. British television network Channel 4 featured the man, Joe, on their show aptly titled My Massive Cock. <laughs> Fucking shout out British TV. Like, 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 Wait, I just... What, do you want, what should we call the show? Well, what's it about? It's about a big cock. Let's call it My Massive Cock. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, there's like a British dating show where it shows like... like it's men and women and it shows it starts scanning up so it starts on the feet and you don't show the face you show the face last and then you like you sit with a person it's like love is blind but it's like you sit with the person and like they then you start scaling upwards for like whoever and then it gets to the genitals and then like from the genitals you just you decide yes or no so maybe it's like he has a small dick but he has a really hot face and you're like fuck like i fucked that up wait oh like, like, like they're naked they're everybody's completely naked oh i missed that part yeah Sorry, I meant to say that. Completely naked. And this is on, like, live television. They show everything. Yeah, the British don't fuck around. Yeah, Dude, that, that's, like, next on a whole nother level. Like, do you remember that MTV show yeah, Next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they just see him and they're like, you're butt ugly. Get the fuck out of here. When they next you, when they see your dick, that's tough. That's yeah, tough. Yeah, There's yeah. no coming back. <laughs> that is very tough. I would like to get that TV show, like... But also, like, <laughs> if you have... Like, she next to me, my cock was too big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you have, Jesus. like, a small dick, then you don't go on that show. So I'm sure, like, everybody's fine. Yeah, if that's a good like, point. A, that's a good yeah. point. Because, okay. because no one, like... If you have a small dick, you know you're not getting past it. Yeah. Like, you're like, all right, she'll be okay with the knees, but once we get to the dick, it's, yeah. a, <laughs> it's a real fucking disaster scene. <laughs> um, uh, massive cock, which follows well-endowed men. While some of the series admit they don't mind their large, while some of, of the series, yeah, there's a missing word there. While some of the series admit they don't mind their large appendages, others are seeking reduction surgeries following struggles to fit in among peers and strangers. Again, I, I've seen dicks bigger than nine and a half inches, and they seem like guys who operate in society just fine. Joe, who chose to withhold his surname, is among those who have said that their large penis has gotten in the way of leading a normal life and even derailing his career. The scaling is off, quite off. It's thicker than my forearm. <laughs> Knew it. I'm, I'm on fire today. It's about seven inches around. Oh, my God. Ow. <laughs> seven inches around. I don't even know. I, do like, we is have, this seven inches around? We need to get a tape measure and, like, a shrink to figure that out. Hang on. I can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark this. My thumb's about an inch. Okay. One inch. This is going to be hard to mark. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I feel gonna, like he I'm not probably gonna do the science experiment. had to have had kind of a boner because it's like, like that. Like you could see that that's just a big dick. That's not a boner. But if they're saying he has a boner, then I think 
I was gonna say that. Wait, of... is that his dick going down his leg? Yep. This is it right here. Oh, Jesus! I thought it was the fucking thing hanging. I was like, that was a good dick. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just his ball. <laughs> so that's his thing going all the way down to the forearm, going to the, the middle of his quad. Right here, yeah. Right Jesus. All right. Maybe this guy fucking deserves to not have a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a fucking horse cock. <laughs> That is all right, man. I I don't fucking blame anyone for not wanting to be in the same room as that thing. <laughs> yeah, what and is this small? That's the dude, mm -hmm. bro. His dick is bigger than his bicep. Straight up, his dick is bigger than his bicep. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> dude, that is fucking preposterous. <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> dude, that looks like the fucking thing that uh. That Ben Stiller uses to pump up his junk. Yeah. In dodgeball yeah. When he's like he fucking jacks it up a bit. This is crazy. Bro, this guy, this guy has to hit the gym. That's that's yeah. the problem here. If he wasn't so if his body wasn't so disproportionate, yeah. he would it would be it would look better. Like go do some squats, do some curls, have a fucking meal replacement shake after a meal, <laughs> get a couple LBs on you, and then maybe your Massive penis <laughs> won't be as visible. <laughs> also, what are you doing with the job? With that, just to the OnlyFans and fucking <laughs> like <laughs> rake it in. Be like, what's on here? It's my massive cock. Dude, like, I think I think even more than OnlyFans, it's gonna be part of a horse show. Be the fucking horse. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, I, I don't blame these people. I I I hate to victim blame. I hate to uh, be part of a society that that doesn't give people employment because of their looks. But I, mean, I can't have this guy fucking walking around and put his dick on my desk. <laughs> like coming over to talk to me for a second. I'm like, dude, get your fucking <laughs> cock out of my face. <laughs> like he has to if all right, I like I'm like, yo, if you want to work here, you have to wear hockey pants. <laughs> like yeah. that's, that's the only thing you can wear every day to work, is you wear a big pair of hockey pants. Otherwise your dick's gonna take my eye off. <laughs> all right, speaking of dicks, <laughs> let's get checked, folks. Let's Get Checked offers a range of sexual health testing options. They are, Jackie, you want to reach behind you? Or is there, there's, there's a box around here somewhere. We got one. Yeah, um, it's, it's over there. Perfect, right here. Boom. You get this nice little box sent to you. You put your sample in here. Very discreet packaging. Very discreet process. I don't know if anyone here, anyone listening or here in the room, has had uh, an ordeal where they went to get checked for STDs. Um, I had one, the one time I, not the one time, but one time when I was younger, I thought I had herpes. I've told that story before a bunch of times. Um, and I went to the clinic, but I was still like, I think I was like 19. So I was still on my parents' insurance and I didn't want it to come up like that. I went to the clinic on their insurance. So I was just paying in cash, but I, I had already showed up to the clinic. Then I went to go to the ATM and I come back and it was just a whole ordeal. It was not convenient. Let's get checked is super convenient. It's sent right to your house. You can try S you can try at home SCD testing for fast and discreet results with follow up. This is important with follow up virtual virtual consultation and treatment options available. Uh, you know you hope for good news. If you have bad, they got your back there too. Uh, Standard five is the most popular choice, covering the same STDs uh, as testing done by physicians or hospitals. I'm gonna guess. What do you think the standard five is? Chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, syphilis. What's the fourth you think? Pabs, check up their, what their standard five is while I do the rest of this ad read. Um, you can order a testing kit that will be delivered to you in discreet packaging, as I mentioned. Did we say with, gonorrhea? Chlamydia? I don't think we said gonorrhea. Uh, no, I think you did. I did? Gonorrhea to chlamydia. It's it is HIV. Mm -hmm. Gonorrhea, chlamydia, HIV. Mm. Um, syphilis. Syphilis. And what's the last one? I've never known. Trichomyia. I don't know what that one is. We're all research. Tri trichomon. I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe we should get text for that one. Um, <laughs> you can order a testing kit that will be delivered to you in discrete packaging with return label included, as I mentioned. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five days. It is. I don't know if you've ever known this, but when you get the clean test result, it's one of the best days of your life. You, I, I've had like five incredible days in my life. They all started with a negative test result. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost like if you just want a cheat code to be like, let's have a fucking great day today, guys. <laughs> let's get checked, right? It's, it's great to get checked for a million different reasons. But also, 
it'll be one of the best days of your life. You're like, you, you have a whole new lease on life. Like, I'm a new man. I'm reborn. So go to let's, letsgetcheck.com slash KFC and use code KFC25, KFC25, for 25% off. Let's get checked at home test, re test results. Again, go to letsgetcheck.com slash KFC. Use code KFC for K – God. Use code KFC25 for 25% off. Let's get checks at home health tests. Get it. Um, all right. Time for – Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole? I ask in a German accent because of the Nazis. <laughs> Mark that. Wait, yeah. But also to answer the question, yes, you're assholes. Nazis are assholes. I'm not afraid to say it. Some people are. Some people go on drink champs and say they can't. They can say anti-Semitic things and not get in trouble. <laughs> not me. Not me, dude. I say pro-Semitic things because I'm a pro-Semite. Um, am I the <laughs> asshole for not wanting to share my bed with a teenager? What? Init <laughs> initial gut reactions, no. <laughs> You're good. Uh, <laughs> this actually also, before I even read this, makes me think of the line in 30 Rock. Um, when Jack is dating, uh, God, I forget her fucking name. Juliana Moore is her name, but I forget the character she plays. And she comes to visit New York with her two teenage kids. And, um... She says she's got she's Julianne Moore's got the worst Boston accent in, in 30 Rock. And she says, Jack, I gotta go home. You know how hard it is to get a teenager out of bed in the morning. And, and to which Jack Donaghy replies, I do, but not for the reasons you're talking about. <laughs> 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 um very funny line. <laughs> Jack Donaghy's like an all time classic character. He's as good as it gets. That's I haven't watched all of 30 Rock, uh, but like any episode I've seen, he's he's, he's stealing the, the show. Star, dude. Absolute star. You had him in like your when that picture came out of all like the women's national team with all the other like American heroes. Yeah. It was I had one, Jack Donaghy on there? Well, yeah, it was Great one of our show. first live shows. You had Jack Donaghy. I think Jenna Jameson was on there. That Classic. might have been Kevin's. Uh but it was like Jack Donaghy was one of the main ones on it. I gotta go dig that up. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole for not wanting to share my bed with a teenager? I'm a divorced mother of three, only one at home, and was seeing people but not dating anyone seriously. I started dating a friend of almost three decades who had been widowed for five years. Uh, I think that he would be a widower, right? Yeah. Uh, I think so. I never learned that one. Um, who had been a widower for five years and moved back into the area after his wife's passing. He recently asked me to move in with him, and I have slowly begun doing that. However, his kid uses his bedroom as theirs. His kid uses his bedroom as theirs. So the kid sleeps in his bedroom. Okay. Yeah. That, that happened before me, and so I didn't expect it to go away anytime soon without serious intervention. By the way, the kid is 17 years old. I'll wake up on a weekend, fix my coffee, and start moving around, only to walk by the bedroom and see a teen in what is supposed to be my bed. <laughs> I'll come home after work and find a teen in what is supposed to be my bed. Keep in mind, this isn't a kid lying on top of the bedding. This is a kid wrapped up in the blankets and sheets in various states of undress. I've spoken to my boyfriend, and he says, well, you weren't in it, so? I I've allowed my children to sleep in my, best my bed past childhood. But we have boundaries, and they definitely would not come into my over, to my room over their own. Am I the asshole for considering moving back to my own house? This is fucking the craziest thing I've ever read in my life. I'm trying to think. Not when, crazier than IBM fucking helping the Nazis. Yeah, but, true. Um, when, Wait. <laughs> no, you go. Just when was the last time you think you slept in your parents' bed? Uh, child. I, 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 the last time I slept in my parents' bed, I have no memory of it. That's, I'm thinking I might have in high school because the computer was in the room and I might have just like laid down. Like when, because it was like middle of the day, they weren't there. Yeah. But I don't think I ever got like tucked in. Dude, I don't even, I wouldn't do that shit either. I, I know, I know, I knew kids in high school who were like, they'd have a party and their parents would be out of town and they'd be like, dude, my parents aren't home. Like, I'm sleeping in their bed. I'm fucking in their bed tonight because they have a big bed. <laughs> and I'd be like, that's fucking weird, yeah. dude. That yeah. is weird. Like, go fuck in your own bed. Yeah. That's very bizarre to fuck in your parents' bed just because it's, like, a little bigger than yours. Like, I don't know. You have a full <laughs> bed. They have a queen or king or whatever. Like, it is – It is. I've slept – now, I've slept in my par my friend's parents' bed. But I wouldn't – I would never – I would never sleep in my parents' bed. I, I was thinking even, like, when we had you guys – um up to my parents' house this summer, I they, there was a, a chance where they were going to be gone that weekend, and I was like, one of you guys are going to sleep in that bed. 
Because I wasn't gonna. I think it's I think it's fucking I think you're fucking sick if you're laying in the bed your parents have sex. Oh god. Yeah. When was the last yeah, time you did it? I don't even remember. When I was young. Very young. I can't remember. Yeah. Thank God we have a room full of normal fucking people. <laughs> Hold on. I, I did just remember a time I did, but it was because I also it was probably like five years ago and at the time I shared a bedroom with an eight year old. Uh, because my brother had moved back and he had a real job and I was a background actor. So they just moved my little brother into my room. <laughs> and like during the day I'd be like, all right, everyone's gone. I would go actually sleep because like it was a, it was a weird couple months. I think there's a little something different about a midday nap versus going to bed in it. Oh yeah. But yeah, yeah. the, like going to, there is nothing worse than like even like when you, at least your room when you're a kid. You know no one's going to fuck with you. You're like, I can go to my room, and maybe at dinner they'll knock on the door. Mm. But, like, it was, like, the one place you, like, you had in the house that was kind of yours, even though when, you, when your parents got mad at you, they reminded you it was theirs. Um, but, like, where people would leave you peace, at least in my house, where it's just yeah. like, yeah, no one really fucks with you when you're in your room. Yeah. yeah. So to, uh, to, uh, to choose not to go to that room where you can have peace and to instead go into your fucking dad. It's even weirder when it's, like, your dad and his girlfriend. Yeah, we like, I'm a little confused. So he he doesn't sleep in there the whole night. No, he just goes in. He just wakes up and then I went they're out. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. It says uh, I'll come over to work and find a teen in what is supposed to be my bed. That is super weird. I'll wake up on a weekend, fix coffee, and start moving around, only to walk by the bedroom and see a teen in what is supposed to be my bed. Yeah, I'm like, like, like I I can't imagine a world in which this is acceptable. And like the, the the boyfriend being like, well, you weren't in it. Like, who the fuck? I I had just made it. What do you mean? Who cares who was fucking in it? I made it. That means that's that's essentially putting a lock on it. The only thing I'll say is I have like a weird thing where beds, like sometimes I just get in my head about like right now I'm sleeping on my couch because I wow. can't because like I just I don't know. Ever since I was young, Wait, I've, you I've said alone. this before. I live alone. Ever since I was young, I've just had a thing where like I. Beds freak me out. Like beds, they kind of they don't like gross me out. It's not like a germaphobe thing. This my point is like I would imagine I probably have like a little bit of something like some weird bed fear, and maybe it's like a where it's like my own bed freaks me out. I could sleep in somebody else's bed, it's fine, but my own bed grosses me out. Sometimes. Do you have a studio apartment, even though it's like I'll clean my sheets like every day, like whatever. Do you have I have a studio, studio apartment. Do you have a studio? And I have a couch and a bed. And like right now, I'm just in my head about the bed. Like I just like it freaks me out to sleep in a bed. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I go through periods in my life. Like the first time I like really slept under the covers was college. Other than that, like I always slept with a blanket on top, and like you, on top you, of my what comforters. Are you saying right now? But like I but so like you were on top I said of this before. I don't recall this. Yeah, okay. I don't now this now one. I'm I'm also uh, to be honest, like, I'm not I'm not a fair judge here because I'm not the best bed guy either. Yeah. But I don't ever have a weird feeling about the bed. I'm just like I'm lazy. I don't feel like getting up, and I sleep on the couch all the time. But that's not like I'm not scared of my bed. I'm not scared of my bed. You think there's a monster under it? No, I don't think there's a monster <laughs> under it. But I just have a weird thing since I was young. I just have always slept with blanket on top of comforter. Like and you then, just didn't feel like making it again. No, I just like for some reason the idea of sleeping in the sheets. It for some reason it grossed me out. It wasn't about the sheets being dirty. It wasn't about like the, I don't know why, but for some reason I just couldn't do it. Like every single time I would like like have like a little panic attack before like if I had to get in the sheets or something. So like so I feel like I have some kind of weird bed fear. I feel like I've said this before, but maybe not because you guys are all looking at me like. It really sounds good. like something you might have said to a therapist. Okay, like, okay, okay. I have <laughs> so said I this to a therapist, and they they like had no idea what it was, but they're like, maybe you have like some weird like childhood trauma or whatever. Yeah, that's that's what I would guess with like with beds or something. But I don't. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, then, and I'm sure that's a good trauma to have. <laughs> 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 of, all, of all the traumas, I'm, like, I'm sure there's something fucking weird happening in bed as a child. No, 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 no. Not, not trauma. Like, like maybe like I had like a bad dream in bed or something one night. Anyways, okay. Point Point is, point is, uh, maybe like he has some weird affliction or bed thing where he just like is freaked out about his bed. I would guess he. De I, mean, I can tell you definitively, he has a weird bed thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where it was born of. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he has some fucked up shit. I mean, maybe he just. I mean, he's seventeen. Like even tw like twelve to fourteen, even fourteen's even pushing it. I could excuse it as like a childhood crush and like maybe he like. Wants to be next to his mo his dad's girlfriend. He finds her cute or whatever. I mean, seventeen, you're you're turning into real creep. Yeah, category. yeah. Like that's you're, let, let's call it what it is. This kid's a pervert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this kid's a pervert. That's what it feels like. Yeah, 
I mean, like, but also, like, if he was doing this before his his mom, the, before this woman ever moved in, he was just doing it in his dad's bed. Yeah. Bro, like, how often do you think single dads are cleaning their sheets? Ew. Oh, bro, never. Fucking never. Yeah. Fucking never. I'm not a, quite a single dad, but I we, we used don't to, clean my sheets very often. We used to <laughs> describe, like, getting fucked up as getting, like, single dad, divorced dad drunk. And, like, <laughs> that, with that kind of mantra, I feel like it's, <laughs> you're not cleaning it. Yeah, ever. dude's coming home every night. Nice little buzz on from the bar. He's pulling in, pulls in every night. Fucking one eye open at about 8 30, 9 o'clock because he doesn't have the old ball and chain saying, I know you were off at 5 30. <laughs> he just rolls up, his kids all cozy up in his bed because he misses dad. That's what the whole thing is. This kid this kid's a pervert who just misses his dad because he's too much of a drunk. <laughs> that took a turn. <laughs> Would I be the asshole if I took my deceased grandmother's ex boyfriend for selling a painting he made of me? Again, to be clear, would I be the asshole if I took my deceased grandmother's ex-boyfriend? This fucking shit here with these fucking parents and grandparents having boyfriends and girlfriends <laughs> is nonsense. This has to be cleaned up. There has to be a new word for it. <laughs> once once you're over 50, you don't have boyfriends and girlfriends anymore. Stop being gross about it. Um, oh, that's what my, my great aunt had a boyfriend that, like, he got real weird with the family where, like, he was a kiss you when you showed up. Yeah, it was. I'm like, what happened to your first wife? Is she dead? <laughs> no, I, I don't know what you call it, but we got to think of something. I, I think even 50s maybe a little old. If you're divorced, no, that's not, that doesn't work. If you're well, I'll stick with 50. I'll stick with 50. If you're over 50 years old, you don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend. You have to think of some new word. Granny friends. What? Granny friends. Granny friends. <laughs> 50 is not really granny level. But fifty is Mid-age fifty friends. is the age where like stop, don't be fucking gross about it. Don't that's that's <laughs> for fucking people in high school. Um, anyway, growing up, my grandmother had a boyfriend. Let's call him Sam. He was and still is an artist. He was really into photography and painting and drawing. I'm not quite sure what initiated it since it was a long time ago. But one day they were vi- one one day when they were visiting, he ended up making a painting of me sitting on my dad's truck as my dog sat there enjoying the sun. First of all, is this a boy or girl? I don't know. I'm, just, no, I'm, I'm asking oh, for your opinion. Um, it doesn't say. It's got to be a girl. Yeah. You think girl? I'm thinking guy. Truck and a dog? It's grandma's boyfriend? The grandma's boyfriend, yes, but I'm talking about the, the subject of the painting. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm going to go with girl. You're going go with, with girl? girl. Stick, everyone's sticking girl? All right, yeah. you guys can all be wrong together. Um, You're just sexist. Uh, why am I sexist? Truck and dog? I'm all, I'm also I'm judging by the language of this as I, re- I read. This, this this is masculine language. I'm not sure what initiated it since it was a long time ago. But one day when they were visiting, he ended up making a painting of me sitting on my dad's truck as that dog sat there enjoying the sun. It was a pretty painting, and four year old me, now twenty year old female, <laughs> <laughs> was really excited. Sam was about twenty ish young years younger than her, but that didn't matter to her. To me, she seemed happy with him even though he would often be in a nasty attitude and would never let her be alone with anyone. He wasn't what is this, Mike Pence. He wasn't a fan of her family and would rarely allow her to visit us. We all live in a different state than her. So I only met her roughly 10 times. Since we got to see her, my mom called since we never got to see her, my mom called her every Sunday. There was something that was something she always looked forward to. My grandmother was healthy and was always helping out in her community, always a busybody. That's why it shocked us when she suddenly had a, quote, heart attack. This seems like she's suspicious mm-hmm. that Sam might have killed her. Uh, we believe there could, there could have been something else that happened since she was highly allergic to hazelnut nut, and we don't have heart issues in our family. But they never performed an autopsy since she was o- on the older side. She was 82, but that, in our family, that's young. Typically, healthy women in our family die in their late 90s. Our family was a mess after that. And after her body was taken up to our state, we held a funeral. He didn't show up. But once it got to financial matters, that's when he started talking. The house they lived in was under my uncle's name, paid for by my uncle. Sam fought us tooth and nail to get the house and for him to keep his, my grandmother's belongings. He didn't want people in the house at all. He, we ended up getting her belongings, but I believe we are still fighting about the house. She died in 2014. Despite the issues, the family was still friends with him on Facebook, and he would post about his new girlfriend, also much older than him, in the comments of, of one of those posts. In the comments of one of those posts, he told my mother that he was glad he found Elizabeth's replacement. 
Yikes. My mother found the my mother found the kids of the new woman on Facebook and warned them to be careful about Sam since he rarely does have alone time with her and would be controlling. Needless to say, I do not like Sam. But a few weeks ago I got curious about the painting and searched it up. I found and noticed I found it and noticed he was selling it as a print on different websites for a hefty price. I immediately got uncomfortable because some new strangers out there have a painting of a child me, and it just doesn't sit right with me. I also don't like that he's profiting off of me. I knew the painting was featured in the magazine, and I knew he would have a direct copy, and he has the original, but I didn't know he was selling it to people. I had, I had told my aunt about this, and she suggested I take him to court for using my likeness without my consent, and I've sort of considered it. So, would I be the asshole if I take Sam to court? I mean, based on the fact that this guy seems like he killed your grandma, no. Yeah. Fucking do it. That's a... That is that's something that we have to fucking deal with of getting those things signed. And you, I was gonna say he seems like a scumbag. Yeah, you have a zero point zero percent chance, chance of winning this in court. No, if um, like a four year old. Are dude, they just taking him to court for the just for the painting? Painting. If you could prove that, like that is the truck, that is your dog, and that it's you, like if you could somehow prove it, I think you actually have like kind of a decent shot. Really? Yeah. I would think you have no fucking chance winning that. I don't know. We get like new RNC emails every week that threaten like we get sued for everything. So I think yeah, I don't know. it's all threats. Now, how many times does it happen? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, if, he, if he could make like a profit off of the girl's face name and likeness, likeness or whatever. Yeah, I type, mean, again, type. this is something we do pretty often. <laughs> um, but we do it with like celebrities. I don't know. I I feel like with something old. I, first of all, definitively you're not the asshole. This guy sounds like a real cunt. Um, yeah. so you can't be an asshole to an asshole is what I always say. Um, but what, you don't agree with that? You can't be, I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. You can't be an asshole <laughs> to an asshole. Yeah. Someone's an asshole. You, like, you can be an asshole to me. You're just treating them the way they want to be treated. Just like Jesus did the golden rule. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a pretty, I think this is a pretty cut and dry one. I can't really speak to what your legal shots are, but you're definitely not the asshole for suing a fucking motherfucker. Who was a maybe killed your grandmother? Was a dickhead to her. Didn't let her see her family. Uh, sued you for the house and didn't want anyone to even have any of the belongings in the house that belonged to your grandmother. I would I would say you are not an asshole. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty quick, pretty quick. Yeah, no. This is kind of off topic, but kind of on topic. Okay, so perfect. like if so like I remember learning like there was like a lawyer named Justin Bieber, for example, okay. or something. So if if lawyer Justin Bieber wanted to make a podcast named like Justin Bieber's podcast or something like that, is that infringing on yes is it but yeah. that's also but his name but it's also his name but it doesn't matter it's like it's like that i i i only, the only reason i know this is like when i was younger i remember someone was trying to open a store called madonna's in like Times square oh and their name was madonna but they couldn't use but it. like it's fucking madonna's like it's not your name like, the, that's yeah, it so is, annoying it you is annoying like and it name. does suck but like I mean, I mean, to be fucking totally honest, we don't have to talk about stars that big. If someone was like opening like Feidelberg's fuck shack, I'd be like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you you would say no to that? I mean, not to that. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, I was going to say. Would you yeah. imagine Feidelberg's I'm, I'm a, fuck I'm, shack? I'm a bad <laughs> example. Like, I, I'd be like, ah, whatever. <laughs> um, but the, the, yeah, I think if you are a public figure, <laughs> yeah. you, you have right to. I was going to say, you can't start suing people for naming like this. <laughs> we have a lot of people to go through. <laughs> Durax, number one. <laughs> you have, you, I think when, when you're a public figure, I think you have, uh, I don't know about, I don't want to say a legal right to your name, but you have a little more okay. standing to go. Yeah. Like, I mean, like if someone wanted to open like Dave, like someone named Dave Portnoy wanted to open like Dave Portnoy's pizza, like, Dave, yeah, you can't. that wouldn't happen. It just seems so sad. <laughs> yeah. It is sad that your name no longer belongs to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your name only belongs to you as as long as... I agree. The all the Jackie Nicholses out there, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope somebody, uh, Jackie Nichols kills somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Jackie don't Nichols do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we just go right into voicemails now. All right. What's going on, KFC Fights? Nick, Jackie, Pabs, the whole squad. Um, I got a story to share with you guys about something that happened earlier this week. Uh, so I have a four-year-old son. I picked him up from school and pulled back into our apartment, pulled into my parking spot, and a mail truck pulled up right behind me. And I knew I had shit I needed to get out of the trunk. Uh, so I let my son out of his car seat, and then I run around to the back of the car, and I load it up. And as I'm doing this, I notice that the mailman getting out of the car is like, 
probably mid to late 50s, early 60s, but he's not dressed like a mailman at all. Like he's got like a crew neck sweater on and a pair of jeans. Just it, it was it was just a weird like look for a mailman. Um, but all that aside, I'm just kind of doing my thing and my son's standing next to me. And then all of a sudden I hear my son go, hi. And I turn around and I look and my son has his arms wrapped around the mailman's waist. And the look on this guy's face was like, if you just slipped an, an alcoholic a shot for the first time, like you tricked him into it. He looked at my kid like, oh my God, it's happening again. <laughs> like, I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. It's been 20 years and I'm going back to jail. And I had to just fucking laugh in this guy's face because it was so absurd. And it's like telling on yourself. The, the look on his face, he's just like, oh my God. <laughs> so obviously you have the, the talk with your kid about like, okay, man, look, you can't just go running around hugging random strangers. But at the same time, all I could do was fucking laugh. I, I audibly laughed at this guy because he was so shocked. So I guess my question is, have you ever been put in a situation like that where something so absurd happens that you just fucking laugh in somebody's face? I don't know about that, but I don't think the... I think the male guy did everything right. Because if the parent is turned around, a child hugs you, and then that parent turns back, if you're doing anything but looking scared, you're getting, like, swung on. It is... Um, I haven't had it happen so often with children... I have them with dogs a lot. Dogs like my penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> like dogs are always like fucking nuzzling up, and I, I always like have to do like the oh okay okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I get what they're I get I get exactly what this mailman's going through. <laughs> um, I've had I've had fucking labs put their noses on my junk. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I can't think of a situation where, like, like that, like something that extreme. I mean, yeah, I, I, I exclusively laugh at absurd things. Yeah, it is same. the, this is called a defense mechanism. <laughs> it is, um, fuck, who was it? With oh, bare naked ladies. The, I'm the kind of guy who laughs at a funeral. So yeah, I mean, that's one. I laughed at a funeral a lot. Oh yeah. Um, but that's I don't I don't think that's that crazy. I think that's pretty normal. That's I actually uh. Did you see the TikTok going around of that guy describing well, why yeah, I did that? I'm going to tell everyone something real quick. So oh, yeah, you didn't see TikTok. Yeah. If your question starts with, did you see the TikTok, my answer is no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> the second I said it, I was we, like, I oh, think we've said it five times this episode. Right? <laughs> Sorry. They, well, have you seen this TikTok trend? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get you addicted to the TikTok. How do you uh, just get on TikTok? I'm on TikTok. I just don't use it. I have a TikTok. 5,000 followers almost. I'm going to keep saying, did you see this TikTok until you start watching TikToks? Yeah. All right, fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll just start sending them to you. But yeah. uh, no, that guy described the story of it, and it was like his brother's funeral. And the priest quoted, uh, who was it? I, uh, Leonard Skinner. And that's like, he just started like laughing. He's like, what the fuck? Because like, normally it's like a Bible verse. And he, uh, I forget what Skinner's song he quoted, but uh, I was like, that's. that's Symbol man. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was fucking perfect one <laughs> um by the way you know leonard skinner is a real person speaking of that kind of your question leonard skinner is a real man uh he's a lawyer in their hometown really yep uh my dad told me that when i was a kid i don't know i was gonna say did they just change the uh how to, how to spell it so they yeah. could be just yeah, to yeah. shove it to him and be like yeah leonard skinner maybe something like that yeah uh so let's see Leonard Skinner. It was a high school gym teacher, realtor, and bar owner. Okay, I thought he was a, uh, I thought he was a, a lawyer for some reason. But yeah, Leonard Skinner is a real person. That's how. That's where Leonard Skinner came from. <laughs> um, what was the question here? Oh, anything absurd ever happened? Just, yeah. I yeah, do I don't. I don't really. I don't hang out with kids. I feel like this kind of only yeah. happens with kids. Maybe I don't he just doesn't with... like kids. It's kind of like a jump to just. Like him oh, if, if like, I would, dude, if if I was just like, some random kid that hugged me. I'd be like, hands up. Like, yeah, you I can't touch know. kids anymore. I'd be like, <laughs> well, like, you can never touch kids. You know what I mean? Like, that, that came out wrong, but you just. <laughs> what happened? You just, what happened? No, just, like, just relate back to the childhood trauma no, in the bed. No, no, no. 
<laughs> you just can't, like, in this, you just can't. You yeah, know? America's going to hell in a handbasket. You can't even <laughs> touch kids anymore. I think it's a good thing that you can't touch kids anymore. <laughs> I'm just saying, you can't do it. <laughs> Just saying, it's against the law. You can't touch kids yes. anymore. Um, the same way that you're against Nazism, I'm against touching kids. Equally. Equally, maybe even more. You're more against touching no. kids than Nazis. No, no, no. no. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> if you had to rank the two, which one? Are you, <laughs> what are you I more mean, like, against? You. No, I'm I'm super against both. But which one's more? No, I'm not. It's, it's like a favorite kid. Like oh, I love both. My I kids. know. I'm not gonna. You rank like that. you hate one more. What I'm do you not gonna rank that. Nazis or, or touching kids. I'm not gonna answer that. Okay, all right. I feel oh, like wait. Nazism does kind of... I do hate that because that is fucking with kids. Not, not bad choice of words, but like... Okay, fine. What, what, if, what if I change it from... Because <laughs> Nazism really evokes memories of like Holocaust and more violent stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. if I just change it to white supremacy? Like, like are well, you... Uh, like, I don't like that either. <laughs> <laughs> but is touching kids worse than white supremacy? That's a great question. <laughs> I, I, I really don't want to rank that, but if I had to... Yeah, yeah. Like, gun to your head. No, this feels like a trap. I'm not good. Is that a trap? I feel like... Um, if I think it's, it's got to be kids. Kids are yeah, kids are worse. But I do feel like... Because um, if you're just a quiet white supremacist, you just mind your fucking business and just say all quiet, the words though. in your head, you're quiet, not though. hurting anybody. You're right. But if you're, if you're touching, touching kids, kids, you're touching hurting kids. It's a physical action yeah. that you're doing. Okay. So touching kids, we're ranking number one. <laughs> White supremacy. White supremacy is number two. Number two. Yeah. And if but Nazism, Nazi, I think if, Nazism, Nazism, if you throw Nazism, Nazism, Nazism in there, I'm gonna put that one. We put that on Nazism's high. one because that's a whole thing. Yeah. Well, should we just go top five right now? Let's <laughs> 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 no, we'll stop there. We'll stop there. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Nick's face right now, where he looks like the postman. <laughs> See, what the <laughs> fuck we gonna do? <laughs> um, all right, next voicemail. Hey, what up, crew? Okay, um, I just finished work for the day, so I've got a am I the asshole for you? Um, oh, <laughs> um am I the asshole? So you guys are just talking about vanity plates. Am I the asshole for having? this vanity plate on a Prius. I know. I'm the asshole. I'm absolutely the asshole. But I just figure I'd throw this in there anyways. Wait, what Eva. did that say? What does it say? What did you say? McLovin. 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 <laughs> I think that you have a vanity plate. I think it's best to like... I would do something that makes that people behind you think like sometimes I'll see a plate and I'll be like, what does that mean? So if you did something like lots of owls or something, mm-hmm. like if, if it was like lot, I don't, I don't know. It's just like the first seven letters, lots of, I guess that's eight. Lots of owls. Just bear with me. I don't know. That's no, just no, no. I, so then far the person, I'm in. So then the far person I'm behind you would be like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, does this person have a lot of owls? <laughs> Or like they would just like be like something that doesn't quite make sense, and then you just know that you're fucking with everybody behind you. I think that's the best way to go with the vanity plates. I, I I completely agree. Thank you. How did you think you would come up with lots of owls? I was thinking about owls earlier today, and then I was just thinking of three letters. Do you know words. someone in the in the thought I was an owl in the box we were talking about earlier? No. Yeah. So he's an owl. Which again, the nose thing that really hurt for the beak. Yeah, Jesus. They have small beaks though. That's true. Yeah. That's true. If it was a toucan, different story. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. So you should be flattered. I, I, I yeah, sure. I'm flattered. I very. It's like I got a nose job. Um, <laughs> the speaking of, are we gonna get it? Oh fuck! It's not. It's not. Um, it's not trippy right now. It's not. It's not. So it is, for those who don't know, it is October 26th. It is the first day Jackie is allowed day. to blow her nose since the surgery. Um, I I've not blown it today. I'm pretty scared of what's gonna come out. Eddie has bought me this gold. Eddie Eddie Ferrar Barcel Eddie. Oh, I actually don't know his last name. What is his? I last think name? I know. No, you nailed it. Ferrar, nailed, nailed it. He got because he used his Barcel surviving some Barcel money. Oh, okay. Is that a nice shit. handkerchief? What? Is it a nice handkerchief? No, no, it's like Amazon. Uh-huh. Whatever. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a matching tie. So I told him that I would blow my nose. <laughs> okay, so it's a pocket square is what that is. Yeah. So it's a pocket square. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. 
Yeah, uh, I guess so. He had it sent to me, and like when it got here, I was so confused because it looked like it was just a tie. I was like, "Did Eddie just get you a tie to blow your nose?" <laughs> I had to like text him, and be like, "Let's Did let's, give it, let's give it a try, right? If if nothing comes, nothing comes is whatever." Okay. But like, we got we got to give you it. You guys. A okay. Can everybody look away? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> we have a million cameras on you, but yeah, we'll all look away. Okay. Three. No, I'm scared. What? Three. Two, no. one, negative one. Okay. This is, I can't do it. I you can't, have I to can't, do okay, it, dude. Okay, okay, okay. Blow, 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 blow. Okay, yeah. everybody look away. Okay. Baz, Nick, Colleen, fight. No, you're doing that thing. Your hands are there. Okay. Oh, my God. It didn't sound like much. No, but it was. I mean, it wasn't, but, like, I could do more, but, like, that's all I'm doing for now. It hurt. I could feel all the cuts. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Whenever I have spicy foods, I could feel <laughs> everything. Oh my god. Did it's you? So painful. Did you see Ben Polizzi's, uh video yesterday? No. Can you go to his Twitter real quick? I didn't do that. Thank you, Eddie. I didn't know that there was going to be pain involved in that. I, I thought like. It yeah, I thought gross. When you said I felt all the cuts, I was like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah. like stitches and shit in there? Mm -hmm. Well, I could just feel like right there. It's like. Hey, guys. Oh. I feel amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm beautiful. I'm finally pretty now. Thanks for all the support and messages. I feel amazing. Well, thanks. <laughs> 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 um, okay, as for the. Uh, I forget how we even got to nose blow. Yeah. Not a bad nice license plate. Nose blow. Nose blow. Yeah. But that N O Z B L O. That sounds like a cocaine. So it sounds that definitely yeah. sounds like a cocaine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely. That guy's got a lot of nosetol yeah. on the car. Like that would just get you pulled over pretty easily. You, like. you, oh, you think so? They'd be like racially if you, if profiling. Like if speeding and then they their thing says no blow, nose blow. Nose blow. <laughs> 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 no, not, I like it even more now because I'd be like, no, I'm not, motherfucker. I just think it's funny blowing your nose. <laughs> I, have, I have a childhood trauma from my grandmother pinning me down to blow my nose when I was a kid, and I don't do it anymore. Then they'd be like, okay, let's test you, and you'd be like, fuck. I, well, no, I'd be like, don't fucking come near me. I don't. I, I blow my nose once a year, maybe. Wait, are no, you no, serious I'm, about the tr childhood trauma? Yeah. I thought you were just throwing some shit out. No, no, no. I'm dead serious. We, we've talked about this on the show before. Wait, what? It was. It was. I mean, it, it wasn't like a fucking like actually like a violent act or anything like that. But my grandmother was like, "You have to blow your nose," and I was like, "No." She's like, "You have to blow your nose," and I was oh. like, "No." And then she like held me down and was like, "Blow!" And I was like, "No!" <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is it a family retreat? On oh, no, a family retreat, family reunion in North Carolina. And I was like, "Get it out of here!" And then she made me blow my nose, and I fucking hated it, and like. The, the tissues tickled me and my snot went all over the place. And I was like, fuck this. I'm never doing this again. And now I never, ever, ever blow my nose. Polly's mom? Uh, no, my dad's mom. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's shower nose blows. Oh, that's a different story. That's a different story. That's a snot oh, rocket. I'll do a snot rocket. Yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah. I'd, uh, Ew. I'll, do, I'll do snot rockets. I don't do nose blows. <laughs> different things. So you're just scared of handkerchiefs? Yeah, I don't like the way it like, flutters on your face. <laughs> this is one of those things I'm saying. I cannot put myself in your shoes because you say <laughs> things are so unrelatable. I'm 100% in on that. Yeah. I never blow my nose. I you don't like the out. way a handkerchief flutters on your face. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Like little butterfly kisses on my lips. Get out of here. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Next voicemail. Next voicemail. Last, last voicemail, right? Last, last, last voicemail. KFC, fights, rest of the crew, what up? Um, fights tried to take your advice earlier in my therapy session. Uh, I was going to bring up an anti-hero, of course. Um, but she beat me to it. Uh, I get there, she's just like, before we get started, I know that Taylor Swift dropped. <laughs> so, I know that some way you're going to relate to one of the songs, so let's talk about it. I was like, right, I don't know how I feel about that. You're just coming at me off the bat. But, uh, so, it was a session. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anybody that would have you like that, you know, roaming targets for four or five hours, standing up till midnight, 3 a.m., that kind of crazy shit. Um, like if Tupac, you know, was actually alive, would that do it for you? Let me know. Viva. Wait, so what was the question to Kevin? I, I oh, really what know. artist, like, he would stay up? And, like, he would go oh, wait? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. So we can't get Kevin's answer on that. Um, Jackie, who's yours, I guess? Well, I first mean, of all, sorry. Um, when folklore came out, 
my therapist did like the same kind of thing. Or maybe That's it was awesome. Evermore came out. But she was just like, so you want to get into it? And I was <laughs> like, what? She's like, you're going to have a lot of this Taylor you relate to, right? And I was like, <laughs> let me tell you about, was it, because uh, Dear Theodosia, what's her? Were you just saying Dear Theodosia? I was, it was kind of Dear Theodosia, <laughs> but it was also not. It was, uh, there's a song where the rumor is that the album was, uh, the song is about, it's, a, it's from her to young her. It is um, oh. Dorothea. Dorothea, yeah, Dan yeah. Dan Dorothea, they all want to be it. But are you still yeah. And it's like, basically, like, are you the same person you were when you were younger? Like, oh. it's like, it's like, congratulations, like, you're in, you're on TV now, and you're in magazines, and everyone likes you, and you're famous, and, like, things are good, but, like, are you even remotely happy anymore? Oh. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and, like the, the chorus is like, you don't have that glimmer in your eye anymore, and I was like, yeah, Tiffany, I got one. Let's <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Mirrorball came out, and you were like, this oh, song Mirrorball is actually one? about this. And I was like, holy fuck, I didn't catch that at all. And then she said verbatim in the Folklore Long Pond sessions, like what you said. Really? It was, dude, she, like, I got to go put those clips side by side because, like, you got it. <laughs> like, I'd like you to do that, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, the, it was the exact same thing. Like, what song is you? And I was like, <laughs> Never Grow Up by Taylor makes me cry every single time. Really? Yeah. That was like about, like, it's like the line, it's like, your mom, like, don't make your mom drop you off, like, a block ahead. Like, she's getting older, too. And it's <laughs> so sad every there are, single time. Talking, talking sad, Taylor, will get me to tear up quicker than anything. I mean, you can tell right now I'm tearing up. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah no, I'm talking, talking sad Taylor songs and songs you relate to with Taylor, <laughs> yeah, I'll cry. Every fucking time, thank you very much. Um, except Antihero, really, though. Because Antihero, yeah. I absolutely do relate to very much. You get the shirt. Um, it, it, I, I relate to it in in the it's me high on the problem, it's me aspect. But also, like, just the overarching theme of the song is, like, how do you guys still like me? Like, like, <laughs> like aren't you fucking sick of rooting for this? Like, 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 yeah. And, like, yeah, I think I, I, I put myself in those shoes. It's like, aren't you fucking sick of rooting for, like, the man-child who can't get his fucking life together? Like, Dude, I am so – I want I want to see you have a conversation with Taylor Swift so bad because <laughs> if you start hitting this shit that, like, I don't think other people are looking at it that way. And, like, it, it, she's like no, – There's yes, one where right. it's, like, it's like, it must be exhausting always rooting for the anti-hero. So it's, I'm not an anti-hero. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, it must be exhausting rooting for me to get it together. <laughs> I, have, I have so many people in my life who are rooting for it, and you guys all must be so fucking sick of it. Um, I do feel that, like, with, like, friends who try and, like, make me be more on time, like, make me make my doctor's appointments and, like, all that, it's, like, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to get, like, better at yeah. that. It's just... Yeah, give, give just, up. Just, like, accept me. <laughs> um... But yeah, Antihero would be one. Um, there, there are a lot of songs on the album that on this one that I related to. Um, but Antihero, Antihero is probably top of the list. The but what is your what is your artist? Who would you stand for? When I was younger, have you listened to full in, through Midnight's yet? No, you haven't. Have half. It. How are you at half, bro? It's like a forty-five minute album. Yeah, but I, I haven't sat down for the rest of it. I'm a busy girl. <laughs> I have you have headphones in. 24 7. Yes, because I'm editing your you. 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> you talked about Nazis for 30 minutes today. <laughs> I had a lot to edit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, but no, One Direction when I was younger, One I was D. like a yeah. huge One Direction fan. Okay. Directioner, as we called it. I, I, dude, I, re I vividly remember where I was when I first heard. That's what makes you beautiful. beautiful. Where? Dude, I was in the fucking back seat behind the driver of the Chevy Silverado on the Barstool Blackout Tour. And I was oh. like, turn that radio down. I was on my laptop because we had like one of those like hot spots in the car that must have cost so much money. Um, <laughs> and I was on my laptop and I, was, I think I blogged it right away. I was like, this is the hottest fucking song I ever heard in my life. <laughs> like, like, that's a, Barstool back in that used to be like, just be like, this is what we're doing right now. Like, this is what we're listening to. This is what we're wearing. I think all that kind of shit. It was, a, it was a very different website way back when. I don't know better or worse, but very, very different. Um, and and uh, it was just like, I, I probably played that song 15 times that day. Yeah. That is a song that it's like... Yeah, you're gonna keep going. <laughs> it's also kind of like I remember not liking the song for a while because I was like, 
it's like basically just telling you like to be insecure and like it's cute when you're insecure but it's like that's not what got like it's just not a very good message when you think about it that's not a good message yeah it's cute being insecure it's like the way i, I like, think i think i think like anything a healthy balance is cute i think like i i think like like i know like what's your name danny does like those prank videos where it's like you want to eat my box? Yeah, and I'd be like, Jesus fucking Christ! No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, that one was that one was so That's aggressive. Like, you're too confident. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Props to her. Yeah, she commented on our Josh Wolf clip that was like, uh, being embarrassed is just a mindset. It's like she's like. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's impre- that's actually very impressive. <laughs> hey, you want to finger my asshole? <laughs> like, I don't think so. <laughs> what's the what's? I mean, like, if you're too confident, it feels like a trap. Like, what are you doing here? What's going on? You you twelve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John, March twenty third, twenty twelve. Your first One Direction tweet. If anyone has the cure for One Direction infection, which I think you coined. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I had a virus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need that ASAP. Yeah, speaking of, there's there was also a Danny DeVito One Direction crossover at really? some point, like that you posted a Wait, photo. Wait, 2012? I, I bet that's I bet that, that's when fucking that was 2014. You have tweets every year about One Direction. <laughs> yeah, you, One Direction's fucking One Direction's fire. Fire. Yeah. fire. Yeah. All right, Paz, who you say that for? Frank Ocean. Frank oh, Ocean. Yeah, yeah, I would do the same. Really? Yeah. Bang. That's a good one. Nick? I don't know who anymore. Like back in the day, I would have stayed up. I think I had stayed up when um, Blink dropped, but like also when I stayed up for that album, that album sucked. Oh, I'll probably like, stay for Blink this time around. Yeah, this time around I will, but like if it's anything like Neighborhoods, like keep your expectations low. Yeah. Because yeah, that yeah. album was awful. But Neighborhoods wasn't with Tom, was it? I think that was the one when he came back that they did. Really? Yeah, I, th- I thought so. Or what? Because I know they got back together and did a tour, and I went to that original one. Maybe um, it was like the purple album cover? Black. It was like... Um, That's all right. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know if I'd stay around. Like, lit- literally, I think lately it's been Taylor. Like, those are the only ones I've stayed up for because it's it's a thing on social media and it's fun to, like, tweet along. Right. Everyone's on the same song at the same time. Um, it's very fun. It actually was funny like, when I woke up. I mean, I slept for one hour Thursday night. Or one and a half hours. Yeah, when you tweeted like you smoked a pack of cigs to stay awake, I'm like, I know that fucking game. Yeah. That is, that's <laughs> you start getting just fucking. Does going it keep you awake, or it's just like? Yeah, it's something to do. I mean, if I fell, I, I guess I could fall asleep, but I was outside the fresh air. I mean, like if I was if I was in bed, yeah, I probably would fall asleep and lit the house on fire, but that didn't happen. Um, I actually did stay up for the Noah Kahan album. Oh, which, what? For the Noah Kahan album. Stick did you season. really? Yeah, I mean, I was, I've been on stick season for like. I like, didn't. Why, why, why? Why don't you got to verbalize I that? I played stuff. it for you in Vermont a couple of times, mm. waiting for you to be like, "This is a bop," and you just did no reaction. How many times did no, I play he it did. in Vermont? No, he did. I he remember, did? Yeah, yeah, like, because yeah. okay. we were doing it, and he was like, he was doing his little surfboard yeah, dance, yeah, yeah. And, like, like, <laughs> like this. I did. Okay, but right. but but I don't think he like realized how good how, the song. Yeah, no. Well, it was you playing Stick Season? Stick Season, yeah. the song, yeah. And then the album, the album the came out album like this came out uh, a weekend before Taylor. A weekend before Taylor? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And right. I wanted the I, had, I was the first show, one to find yep, it. Yep. Yeah? Mm-hmm. She yeah, was, I was there when it was unreleased. Yep. I was going to say, I heard that from you guys in the car traveling to different shows and stuff, mm-hmm. and now it's going to be like my number one Spotify wrapped. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's Noah, the Noah Khan album is, yeah. is really, really, really fucking good. Moving sideways or growing sideways? Growing sideways, growing sideways is my number one, but the whole thing's fucking sick. Uh, Colleen. I would say young. I would say younger Jonas Brothers. I would have done anything for them when I was young, and I did meet them, and it was one of the best moments of my life. The um, uh, sorry to totally. interrupt you. You as you were getting up, you kind of interrupted yourself, and you just stopped it young. And I was like, is she going to say Jeezy? I was like, like, who the fuck is she going to get to the microphone and say right now? You're not money bag, yo. (laughs) 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 Yo, younger Jonas Brothers. Okay, that makes more sense. That one checks out. (laughs) <laughs> the only people I really stay up for is Taylor Swift. Taylor. Like, she's the only one I would like. It is. It, with her, it's like a cultural movement. It is a yeah. big thing when Taylor Swift drops an album. And like you said, like everyone's staying up. Everyone's tweeting about it. Um, but speaking of the Jonas Brothers, um, uh, a young Barstool Nate was hanging out with them the other day. Young. 
What? Nate, Nate, Nate saw um, at a. I guess I guess they just moved to Murray Hill. Uh, Joe and Sophie Turner, and they're like, I, I brought this up with Fran, and Fran was like, Oh yeah, it's a thing on TikTok that like, Joe Jonas is just like the new king of Murray Hill. Um, and so Nate, Nate also lives in Murray Hill, and was at a bar, and just they were there with their baby, and like he just went over. And, he actually he what he used as an opening line was like, I work with Fran and Rhea, and Joe was like, Oh, they're awesome. I love those girls. That's awesome. And, oh, <laughs> It, I mean, it wasn't an extended conversation, but it was a quick little... I was um, walking the West Side Highway one morning on a Friday after Thursday, I think we I went out, and so pretty hungover walking, and Joe Jonas ran past me, and I was just not in the mental state, like, where you're, like, kind of foggy, and all of a sudden, Joe Jonas just ran <laughs> past me, just, like sunglasses on like so casual were you was running like, or were you just like, i was just walking just walking. <laughs> just walking and i was like i was like i swear to god that was joe jonas so he's everywhere yeah. you've already met them yes when i was younger okay. so i told my siblings and one of my sisters texted back she she goes did he recognize you <laughs> 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 joe jonas um, tv show was underrated like good. what was that it was just a tv show with the jonas brothers it was good okay all right <laughs> there you go. That's, that's the episode now. Now, time to talk to our boy Hassan Minhaj. Um, Hassan, I say our boy because I actually love. I, I like Hassan a lot. We've interviewed him before. I actually told him after the interview. I didn't want to bring up during it. Hassan is the first person I've ever interviewed solo. It was years and years and years ago. It was I probably call it five six years ago. Um, I think Brendan Brendan Clancy was our producer, and I think I, I think if I remember correctly, he had just forgotten to tell us we have an interview. So he called he called us at like nine thirty in the morning, and uh, I was hungover as fuck, and uh, shocker. And um, he's like, Kevin can't make Kevin couldn't make it in from Mount Vernon or wherever Kevin lived at the time. He's like, Kevin can't make it in. We have an interview with Hassan Minhaj, who was promoting. He might have been promoting Homecoming or he might have been promoting Patriot Act. I forget. And uh, he's like, you got to get to serious. So I fucking shower real quick, throw on clothes. Take I, I lived over on the east side. I, I lived in Murray Hill at the time. Take a cab up Third Avenue, go in a series, which is on like I forget where it is now, but mid fifties, and uh, traffic was crazy. So I had to get out on Third, sprint across. By the time I got to the interview, I was like, like very breathing heavily, and I had to be like, can I just can I just have a minute to get together? And I, I told Hudson, I was like, yo, that was my first ever solo interview, and you were very cool. Cause I'm sure it fucking sucked, so I appreciate that. And he, in, in a testament to how cool he is. He was like, he's like, nah, dude, I remember that. You were in like the camel coat and glasses. I remember you. That was fun. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the fact that you remember that is that's wild. Like, there's no reason for him to remember that. Probably because he, he probably couldn't remember because it, it was so fucking bad. But, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he just played it cool. Like, this guy is but, breathing real heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Hassan is the man. If you haven't ch checked out checked out the King's Jester on um, on Netflix, it's really really cool. We talk about it uh, extensively in the interview, but like. It's not just a stand-up comedy act. Like it is, it's a kind of a multimedia, one-man show, which probably turns some people off. But it, I, I promise you, it's not. It's worth checking out. If someone described it to me this way, I'd probably be like, eh, I don't know. But it is. It's really fucking good. I recommend it to my parents. I recommend it to everybody. It's very, very good special. It's very, very funny. Like, like we say, it's like five stories that are fucking crazy. One of them is how he, he was in, a United not United Arab Emirates, embassy, the day Kalagashi got killed. Fucking with them, and like when he got home, he heard about all, all about it. It's fucking nuts, Jesus. dude. Like he got home, he had told his wife he wasn't going to go to that meeting. His wife was like, "Do not fuck with them. They're not people to be fucked with." And then when he got home, his wife was like, "Thank God you didn't go." And he's like, "I gotta tell you something." <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's awesome. It's a it's a bunch of great stories. Really funny. Check it out. Uh, and also, I think Kevin and him are just best friends now. At one point in this interview, I was like, these guys just fucking vibing. I'm just going to step back. Like, yeah, are... this was one of those uh, interviews where I was getting blown up by our uh, booking team because they're like, they got to rap. I'm like, they're just ha – they're I can't stop them. Dude, and then, like, and then they finished, and like, him and Huston just started talking like basketball yeah. and fucking Mount Vernon and shit like that or, or uh, City Island. It, it is – Kevin, Kevin and Hassan Minhaj might be like just true friends now. Yeah. Um, but it's an awesome interview. Hassan's the absolute man. Um, listen up. Oh, 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 and, and brought to you by uh, the Barstool Sports Store. In the store right now, 
you can find this hat, weird but fucking beautiful. This hat, I feel like every girl should wear this hat. Every girl should get this hat. So I think every girl's like, I'm so weird. But like, you're fucking not. You're totally normal. Uh, and I don't mean that in an insulting way. Like, you're fucking normal. Like, you're not, you're, <laughs> like, you're, like, you're not weird at all. But I think girls like to be like, I'm so weird. <laughs> like, this is nuts. Look at me. I'm eating like avocado toast for dinner. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you just call me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have uh, a bunch of Taylor merch. Uh, um, it, it's me, high on the problem. It's me. Uh, tons of other stuff. This ad is in for the Barstool store. Um, anyway, check all that stuff out. Also, oh. the inaugural Barstool Sports Invitational is coming to Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia <laughs> on Friday, November 11th. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets are now on sale to the public, and stoolies and hoops fans from around the country will be there to watch Barstool Sports pull off a college basketball event like none other. In Game 1, UAB will take on Toledo at 5 p.m. Eastern, followed by Mississippi State versus Akron at 7, with a lot of surprises in between. I can't tell you what they are because I do not know what they are. Join Dave, Big Cat, and the rest of the Barstool Sports on November 11th in Philly. Secure your seats now at barstool.link slash invitational. That's barstool. I'm sorry, barstool.link slash invitational. That is barstool.link start slash invitational. Hassan Minhaj. He's the man. Listen to him. Tell right. like I, I played Kobe. Right. It doesn't matter yeah. what happened. Yeah, that was a, a there was a moment one. of pride I had where I was in the celebrity basketball tournament. I did the you can hoop. NBA celebrity. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far, but I but I but I do launch. Yeah. When I play yeah. when if it's if it's weekend warrior basketball, I'm like, it's anybody's game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm letting it fly. <laughs> and I remember the first time I played, like Master P had his son on mm -hmm. and he was trying to control the like the bench like and I'm like hey bro I'm not playing for a record deal like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here playing for pride like yeah. I'm, I'm going in like Romeo can sit too <laughs> Lil Romeo can wait just like me like That's it's anybody's great. game at that point you know <laughs> but like him, Quavo, Ro they took Quavo it really. Can, Quavo can, he can Quavo bomb can, yeah. from like half court, yeah, right? Yeah, I, yeah. That's the other thing too is if, if I'm in one of those games, like I ain't passing, man. If I don't if pass, I touch right? the ball, it's it's fucking it's don't going. Don't pass up. and don't play D. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not hustle. I'm not yeah. diving on the floor for loose balls. I'm not taking charges, bro. We're we're chucking from half court. I'm saving I, my energy for a run. You think <laughs> I'm gonna like work on my defense back check? Not, not happening. Well, my dumb ass was like, I'm not getting the ball passed to me, so I'm gonna play defense. And then I got crossed up by Caleb, the ten year old kid from. Mm. Stranger Things. No way. And so everybody was like, "Oh, because I'm biting. I'm trying to get That's a pick. The problem. I'm playing the passing. You, lane. you yeah. can't. You open yourself to being clowned, right? If yeah. you if you don't play defense, you can't get crossed. Then up. I chased That's... him down, and then I grabbed the ball from because he's small. He was like yeah. five six. Right? This is season one. Right. He's an he's an adult now. Right. You yeah. know. So he was maybe people and people like you. They started booing me. They're like they're like you're gonna steal the ball from a ten year old. I'm like technically he's thirteen. Like hey hey, hey. he's 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 a middle school school and sometimes that's high school yeah. <laughs> you know so this is all fair game so there you're, like, you're damned great, if you bro. do you're damned if you don't right 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 i get crossed now i got crossed up yep, by yep, a middle school yep. if i don't take the ball back if i take the ball back now i'm a bully yeah so yeah i was like man fuck dude you <laughs> make sure you subscribe to kfc radio on youtube to get all the video content uh, subscribe comment like and make sure you turn on the bell notifications so you know whenever new video content drops I want to say something but the video has to be fast that's it